Episode number 28 with Stephen Mike. Welcome to the Heads Up Poker Podcast. This is Steve Barton. And this is Mike Snyderman. And I'm coming to you from the WSOP, and Mike is back. I'm back in Oceanside, California. Yes, yes. And you had quite the successful trip. Yeah, I can't I can't complain. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, I guess last time we spoke, I had already won a Venetian tournament. And ran deep in a Planet Hollywood, Hollywood one, and then we were talking uh, the day after I bagged day one of the Millionaire Maker, where I made a, another deep run there. Yeah. What would you get? Forty three or something? Or? Yeah, forty third. Yeah. And then uh, twenty nine or thirty k or something. Yeah, twenty nine k. Nice. And then nice. Uh, yeah, I went deep in another in a one k the next day. So yeah, I don't know. I cashed like four of twelve tournaments or something while I was there, and uh, quite profitable. For both myself and my investor. Yes, yes. So that's good. Someone else is happy with my success. And uh, just trying to... Uh, now I'm back in California. And uh, just trying to adjust and uh, to the post-WSOP joys. Of course, I'll be coming back, too. Yeah. For the main event, certainly. And uh, possibly also next week, actually, for a few tournaments. I'm trying to decide... And uh, so, how are you doing, there, Steve? I know you you cashed your first tournament there, and then uh... yeah, I uh, played in a six hundred dollar one at the Venetian. Uh, there were six hundred and six runners. I ended up getting as a two day event. I got thirty eight, and uh, it was they started paying at sixty three, and it was basically a min cash until you get up to like twentieth or something. I mean, like you know, sixty third paid like twelve hundred, and then uh, you know, twenty first paid like eighteen hundred. I mean, it was not, you know, basically no difference for those, you know, 40 people. And um, I ended up, uh, yeah, I got 38th in that, so that was good. And uh, then I played in a Rio deep stack. Uh, I got, four, I busted 14 from the money. I, you know, I was talking with another pro about this today, and I'm like, you know, they were dropping like flies. And I'm like, I had seven bigs, and I knew I could have folded my way. Another to pro. Are you a pro yeah. now, Steve? I'm just checking. <laughs> I like what you mean so. you're t- when you talk to me I'm one pro and this is another pro okay there you uh, go okay. you can think of it like okay, that too okay, I got you. <laughs> no, I'm sorry go ahead yeah and he's like you know those those min caches are really really important he's like you know people undervalue them and he's like yeah I mean you do want first second or third he's like but if you're sitting there with like eight or nine bigs and you know you can fold your way to the money sometimes you just got to take it I'm like you know, that might have been in the same boat that I was in. Because I made such a marginal shove. I kept with king seven off in the cutoff. And uh, I had seven bigs. And it folded to the big blind who tanked. Uh, he uh, he tanked for about two minutes. And then he finally called. And when he called, he flipped over. Uh, he had 40 bigs. And when he finally called my seven big shove, he flipped over ace queen. Well, that's <laughs> like, well, that's just okay. that's just that's just ridiculous. <laughs> that's not an exaggeration. He really went in the tank that long. He really went to the tank, yeah. And and just to show you what kind of player he was, I, I can't believe he made it this far. But uh, uh, a guy also shoved uh, under the gun. Um, I'm sorry, I take the back. He risked under the gun, then under the gun plus one shoved, and then it folded back around to him. This was about a half an hour before, and he uh, tanked about three seconds, and then finally called with pocket queens, and the guy shoved like 14, 15 bigs. Hmm. And that was after his race. So he was incredibly tight, uh, had no idea what shove fold ranges were. Um, so had he, had he had something like ace jack there, he might not tanking that long with ace queen. And, uh. So, uh, you were, at this point you were one for two and then you went back to the Venetian today, right? Uh, well then after that, uh, yesterday I played at Planet Hollywood. I played a 300. Okay. And, uh, I think I played that one really well. I, um, I don't remember making any glaring errors or anything, and and I was making good uh, good reads and and good folds. Yeah, I, I played that one real well. You know, um, and then after that, then I played the Venetian today. I played the eleven hundred, and um, that was fun. That was cool. It uh, uh, felt like well, I, one hand I severely misplayed. Um, it was like level two or three, I think, and uh, the blinds were only one in two hundred. Uh, we have a starting stack of 15,000. 
and um, the button uh, raised, and um, it folded around to the button. He raised, and then uh, uh, then the small blind called, and then I looked down at pocket nines, and I uh, three bet. So the the button raised to like 450, 425. Small blind called to 425. I re raised to 1400. Button calls, then small blind takes a little while. He probably took about 20 or 30 seconds. And then he shoved. And he shoved, there's, uh, let's see, 15, 15. So there's, um, uh, how much dead money is out there? Maybe 4K. And he shoved in for probably about 12,000. Okay. And that's when I went into the tank. And I started thinking, and I'm like, okay, what would he do that with? And I said, you know, Ace King would make a lot of sense there. Um, you know, maybe Ace Queen or Ace Jack suited, you know? I mean, you get two guys that are just kind of, um, we'd kind of been doing a little bit of back and forth war between the three of us whenever the button was coming around. There was like that dynamic there, you know? And, uh. So he could be three betting a monster because you've, um, because exactly. you, you've squeezed before a three bet before or he, he somehow knows you're capable. Exactly. And so I thought, uh, he, um, you know, he's either got a freaking huge one here, or he's got something like Ace King that, you know, if he gets called, he's probably flipping. Um, or he's doing it with something like Jack 10 suited. You know, or, uh, maybe like an Ace Blocker or something. I don't know. There was that dynamic there. And I couldn't decide what to do. So I thought, okay, well, let me see if I can get any kind of live tells on him here. So I kind of picked up my stack and I did the, the fake pump. You know, where you kind of like pick it up like you're going to call, and, but you're looking for his reaction, you know? Right. Well, how many, and, how many chips did you have, by the way, to start this hand? Do you remember? I had about 12. We're, we're both, he had me covered by a couple thousand. So you've got to, you've got to call 10,500 to win like a pot of like a little over 14K. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just, yeah. And, uh, so I thought, okay, let me, let me see if I can get a live till on him here. And, um, so I picked up my chips and I kind of did the pump fake and, what he was doing is his, if you can picture, like, his foot's on the ground, and he's just anxiously, like, shaking his uh, his foot up and down, you know, so it's just like a little, like a, like a dog's tail just going up and down, you know. And when I did the pump fake, he, like, held his breath and stopped. And that's where I was like, okay, maybe he is bluffing and he doesn't want to call. And that, that made me, uh, that made me put the chips in the middle. The button folded, and he flips over pocket queens. And I'm like, ugh. I, uh, <laughs> that was a bummer. I, uh, um, yeah, I went with my read. I went with my gut and, uh, it was wrong. Um, but, uh, fate, uh, was not on his side and, uh, I, the, <laughs> there was a nine right. in the window and, uh, I ended up, uh, getting a boat. Um, so he, uh, he was crippled down to just a few thousand. He was out shortly after, but, uh, that gave me, uh, Basically a double starting stack, and I doubled up right there, and then I uh, got aces, um, got paid off by them. I uh, got aces again, got paid off by them, um, and then I got pocket queens. And in the meantime, I'm doing things like raising with jack ten suited, you know, kind of playing like double get shotted boards and stuff like that, taking it down, picking my spots with bluffs. I I was uh, pretty proud of the way I played after the pocket nines. And uh, then I got pocket queens, uh, two red queens. I'm on the button, and I uh, uh, a girl. Uh, what was she? She would be under the gun. She raised, and then I three bed, and then she called. And then I, I should what, what, back what, up. What a position bit. were you in? I was on the button. Okay, I uh, I don't know if I see a reason to three bet there, but yeah, depending really? depending on how deep you are. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, let me go over the dynamic before because the 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 rotation just before that, I had Jax on the button. She raised under the gun. I three bet her. She called. She check folded the flop. Uh, the flop was Ace King two or something like that. And she said like, oh, I hate pocket nines in this spot. And then she threw it away. So I guess she was behind the whole way. But I I pretty much turned my Jax into a bluff at that point. Um, then the very next uh, button rotation, I'm on the button. She's under the gun. She raises again. Same same exact sizing. Comes around to me, I three bet, and then she calls. Uh, blinds at this point are, um, uh, let's see, what are they? They're two four hundred. Uh, she raised to nine hundred, and then I three bet to uh, 
21. She calls. We go to the uh, we go to the flop, and the flop is um, two, three, six. Okay. Uh, she, she bets. Uh, she leads. She donk leads into you after calling the three bet. She donk leads into me. Okay. Uh, twelve hundred. What was the? Was it rainbow flop or? Uh, it was no. There was a. Uh, it was two tone. There were two diamonds. Uh, she donk leads into me for twelve hundred. Um, I uh, re raise to thirty one hundred, and then she calls. And the way she's calling too, she's having a conversation before this hand started. Like, like she's having a conversation with this guy to my right, and uh, kind of a couple other people at the table. And she's never skipping a stride. You know what I mean? Like she never like stopped the conversation to think about the hand. She just continued talking, and. That struck me as kind of weird. Most of the time when people are getting in a big pot, because the, the way the pot's building, it's like I, I have probably twice her chips, and uh, she's going to have to face a decision for her tournament life here, but she's still going on about this story. Of, I don't even remember what the story was, but it was inconsequential. You know, it was just useless chatter. And uh, But she never skipped a stride in the story. And so when I raised her on the flop, I expected her to just fold, uh, but she didn't. She, uh, she's, she's like, oh, it's on me. Uh, how much more is it? Oh, it's 31 total. Okay. And just got the chips out and called right there. And then the turn was a king of diamonds. And then she shoves all in for, uh, 8,300. The pot I added up was a little bit over 12 from what I could tell. It might have been 12.3 or 12.5, but it was over 12,000. So 12,000 in the pot. She shoves, uh, 85. And, uh, so it's 85 for me to call. A pot of over 20. Uh, it sounds like the numbers are... You you raised to 31 on the turn? Let's see. I haven't written this down. I'm just going Yeah, because if you ra- if she... Unless she donk led really small, it should not have been 12,000 of the pot if there was just 6,200 on the... Uh, I guess there could be. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Um, I'm sorry. The third... It was a diamond on the turn? So yeah. Three diamonds the out diamonds. there and a king? Yeah, so it's a two, uh, three, six. Uh, it was a three low cards with, uh, uh, one, one, uh, maybe it was three, four, six. It was something like that. The three and the, and the six were diamonds and then the king, king of diamonds hit. Um, none of them was above a six on, on the board. I remember that. And two, three, five. That could have been it. I think it might have been two, three, right. five. Um, and then the king of diamonds hits. I have two red queens, so I got the queen of diamonds. Right, you get the blocker. I don't know. That'd be kind of an interesting way to play ace king there if she had it. Why would she donk lead? I mean, if she's going to donk lead, you, you'd think she'd be folding to a raise, unless you guys are both super deep, which you weren't. Um, like the ace king, if I, I would, uh, I might just check call. Especially, especially you're either A, if you've got a diamond in your hand, or B, you're willing to, uh, to rep it. You know what I mean? Kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. um, yeah, Ace King makes sense, I guess. But, uh, I mean, I guess she could have, you know, two jacks with a jack of diamonds. If you're trying to think of hands she could beat, you could beat, or she could have an ace, just an ace of diamonds with, I don't know what, Combinations of ace of diamonds she could have here, unless she unless she raised with ace five of diamonds and also has a gutter ball or something. Yeah, I was thinking that maybe kind of she. Hand. Well, well, well yeah. if you try if you tried to hut her up, what what would you say her V pip is, and what what's her what's her EP raise? I mean, I don't know if he could. Okay, um, I would say her uh, V pip and PFR is probably something like twenty. 420, something like that. 20 with only, so she's kind of passive, she's flatting a lot, or, I don't know, it's, um. She's probably playing 24% of hands and raising, uh, 20% of them. How many, chi- I, how many chips do you have in your, in your stack here to start the hand? Remember? I've got, uh, I think. 40k or something? Probably 30. 30k? So. Yeah, 30, 31, something like that. So that's not an insignificant, uh, bet to be calling there. No, it's not. It's not. 
Although it's some kind of strange if she's got either a flush or a king and you've raised, why not just check to you? Yeah. Um, on the other hand, if she has the hand and she's shoving, you like you're going to say, well, that's bizarre. Why wouldn't she yeah. check to me? You know what I mean? So could be like a leveling thing there. Um, not an easy spot. Um, there's also, you know, quickly, you can just call the turn there. You know what I mean? I mean, it's dangerous if you're putting her on ace king that she's going to catch up. But just in terms of... You mean call the flop? I'm just call the flop, yeah. Just not uh, oh, control the okay. control the size of the pot here. And then... Um, I, I wanted her to shove. I was hoping she had, like, tens or jacks or something. Because the dynamic, the, exactly the same scenario set up the, the button, uh, the rotation before. Okay. Well, so I was hoping she was going to be like, oh, you know what? I got I got nines again here. Uh, this is the perfect flop for pocket nines, and uh, screw this guy. I'm, you know, I'm not going to let him run over me again. I'm, I'm taking it down. You know? Okay, that's fair. That makes sense. So that 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 was my reasoning for raising, is I wanted her to shove there, but then she uh, she just called, and then the king of diamonds hit, and then I started thinking, I'm like, okay, if I had ace of diamonds, king, I would probably donk lead and then call two. I mean, that could be a line that I would take, or I would check call. That's probably what I'd more like to do is check call my uh, bet on the flop and then see if a favorable turn came down like a diamond or either an ace or a king. Um, so that would make sense. Right. Um, I'm just I'm, I'm just pointing out your sense. your willingness to play big pots. It seems like you know what I mean. So, so uh, that's okay. all. Yeah. With, qu- you with, know, maybe with, you're with right. queens, uh, you know, I see no reason to. Um, and, you know, the first Venetian you made a run in, you also had a, a four-bet shove with ace-king and ran into aces and got lucky. Although, I, oh, that one, I don't know if I can really fault you too much for, but... Um, I was so loose at that time, I thought that I would get called by a lot worse. And that was my reasoning for doing it. And then he snap-called with aces. I'm like, oh, jeez. And I got lucky. Right. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you have to if win ace-king versus aces. <laughs> right. But... uh Okay, so this was uh, what? What'd you end up doing here? Did you call or did you fold? I Queens. she called the she called the clock on me, um, so I'm, I must have been taking longer than I thought, and uh, and then I, I eventually just folded, and then she showed the ace of diamonds, mm-hmm. and uh, and I was trying to get her to talk, but she wouldn't talk. You know, I was I was like, okay, you know, you do that with like ace king with the ace of diamonds, um, you know, I'm like. You could do that. And I was also thinking, too, I was like, you know, would she raise in that spot with the ace of diamonds and one of the low cards that hit, like uh, a two or a three? Yeah, that would be that would be a pretty bad uh, under the gun raise and call a three bet with, I would think. Yeah, that would be pretty bad. I don't think she did that. Um, Unless, you know, like ace ten of diamonds or something, you know, ace ten of diamonds or ace jack of diamonds, I guess. Um but uh, if she was going to do those, like personally for me, if I was going to donk lead those hands on the flop and then you were going to raise, I would probably just shove the nut flush draw. Yeah. Or, But I guess it looks exactly like what it is if that's what she has. Whereas if she smashes the turn, that's a good hand to do it with, you know, if you've got jacks or queens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically... uh well, by her showing the ace of diamonds, she was drawn real live, or or possibly you were drawing dead or close to or or in a shitload of trouble. Basically, the two outs. If she's, if she's king. got a king, king, yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I can't. I, I was I, running I through really, all the uh, hands in my mind, and the only thing that made sense to me was ace king with uh, the ace of diamonds and a king of something else. You know, unless she did that with like ace jack. That uh, with the ace of diamonds or something, maybe she led and then called my three bet on the flop, hoping to hit a diamond ace or jack or maybe ace queen. Although I've got two queens, so that's unlikely. Right. Um, but it just it's it is interesting that she's uh, she sounds like she's she's playing well ace king. I, I don't know if I call that passively, but semi passively. A lot of people are going to four bet get it in there. Yeah. Especially if they've seen you three betting uh, with any sort of frequency. So. Um, yeah, if she's if she's calling, usually if they're just flatting three bets with Ace King, they're very kind of flop dependent. And uh, here she wasn't. Apparently, she donk led and called your raise. So I don't know what that means. Could have had aces. And just oh, been, you know what? I never thought of she that. She could have had aces and just been uh, 
Yeah, that's, that would make sense. That's possible. That would make sense. Aces would make a lot of sense. How did I not think of that? I bet you're right, Mike. Uh, that's probably what she had. Yeah, I don't know. Or unless she just was just, uh, there's a lot of chips in the pot, and she just said, I'm going to call here and shove the turn. And she had, yeah. she because and she had like the ace of diamond and some weird, you know, jack of clubs and just whatever. Yeah. Um, I, it sounds to me like she has it, you know, especially if she's had to make a decent lay down before. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I can't really, uh, can't really blame you for how you play that hand. Although sometimes, like, if someone's under the gun raising and they're not like super, um, and they're not like super active, like queens and ace king. I mean, they're ahead of their the person's range, but, um. I think maybe we already discussed. That was a hand last year. I, had, I was one of the chip leaders in the Millionaire Maker going into the day two. Uh-huh. Or one of the top 30 stacks of, you know, however, 8,000 people who started it. And, um, yeah, very er- pretty early in the day, uh, I think it was, guy opens under the gun, and I'm like UTG plus one, and I three bet. I, I had uh, Ace King. And he, th- I three bet, he four bet shoves. I'm like, okay, I called. He had queens and won a flip for like two thirds of my stack. Okay. And I was like, you know, that's that, there's nothing wrong with just flatting there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then just getting away from it. Like when I, I was thinking kind of the same thing where you, uh, you know, especially early position raises. I got no, especially online tournaments. I got no problem, especially amount of amount of position. Somebody raises under the gun. I've got ace king off in the small blind. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm probably flatting there more than three betting, unless it's just a super active player. You got ace king off in the small blind. Yeah, if we, and let's say okay. let's say we each have twenty five to thirty bigs. Okay. Like, really? You would uh, you would flat there instead of right, uh, uh, yeah nine full ring nine handed. I mean, it okay. depends. It would be like again, it's sort of HUD based, but if it's your typical tag player, uh, eighteen twelve or something like that. Um, you know, you're not really that far ahead of the range, if not. Because, like, if it's a good player, like, ace-jack under the gun is, is a fold. Yeah. Especially, you know, when you start getting down shorter stacks. So, basically, there's only one hand you're ahead of. That's a good point. So, I'm yeah. just saying, like, when you, uh, yeah, I don't know, like you, you said, I, I don't know the dynamics when a guy three-bet and he happened to have aces, but, like, although ace-king looks like a monster, especially, um, you know, that's a hand maybe you can even fold, really. If, if, if It depends on, you know, who you're playing against, but if it, yeah. if, if you get, you're saying you get called by worse, but, you know, ace-queen suited is the only hand worse you're getting called by. You're never getting called by ace-jack, probably, yeah, yeah. or you got a pair and you're flipping. There is a little bit of dead money in there, but uh, just throwing that out there, you know, I don't know. Yeah, you know overplaying, what, you right. o- Overplaying ace-king is something where I've... You know, definitely lost a lot of pots pots with. But then on the other hand, you know, there's times where uh, you just play ace-king passively and, uh, you know, somebody gets to the river cheaply with pocket fours or some hand you know they would have folded pre-flop if you, if yeah. you raise. So there's two sides of it. But just, uh, you know, just because you see ace-king or queen, this doesn't mean it's like, okay, time to get it in. Yeah, yeah. You might be right. I, I might, uh, now that you're saying that, I'm, I'm running back in my mind and, I think I do have a tendency to play uh, bigger than normal pots and be willing to to go for it when uh, when I have bigger hands. And I think those are the times where you almost need to be a little bit more careful because that's when a guy can stack you with something like seven five of clubs, you know, hit two pair or hit some random straight that that you don't see and and uh, right and get your whole stack. Yeah, I, I mean, I I probably play the queens the same way, but I was just bringing up, you know, you're in position. It uh, depends who would be, you know, there's always the possibility somebody behind you tools out and shoves shoves their, shoves their ace nine or something like that. Somebody, I, I don't know how big the stacks were behind you. Uh, no, nobody should be shoving. They're pretty light. But um, I don't know, just throwing it out there. It sounds like you played it okay, though. You probably raised and started, like you said, started building a pot with the best hand and then quite possibly got sucked out on the turn. So... Yeah. Any other yeah. card but an ace or a king, it's probably uh, a check fold on her part. It's hard yeah. to say. Yeah, unless she had aces. 
Right. Unless, Unless for some reason she's slow playing aces there, yeah. Yeah. So what was this was kind of the hand that started you uh sliding in the other in the wrong direction? Is that is that what I'm Um uh, yeah, kind of. There there was that one and then when she showed the ace of diamonds I was like I wasn't sure if I made the right fold or not, but I thought, well, move on to the next one. Very next hand, I get ace queen. And, uh, let me see if I can remember the, uh, uh, the numbers here. But, uh, uh, okay, we're still at the same level, uh, two, four hundred. Now this, now this girl's in the big blind. Under the gun, uh, raises to nine hundred. Um, he's a, uh, black guy, probably in his late twenties. Um, got headphones on, seemed friendly, um, looked like a pro. Um, he'd been playing, pro- if I had to give him numbers, I would probably say he's playing like 27, 23, something like that. Um, he uh, raises to 900 under the gun, uh, folds around to the guy to my right. Uh, he calls the 900. I've got ace-queen offsuit, uh, ace of spades, queen of diamonds or hearts. I think it was a heart. Okay. Uh, what are you doing here? Are you raising or are you folding? All right, not folding. Uh, you, are you raising or calling? Uh, you're in the small blind now? No, I'm on the, let's see, the button is one to my left, so I'm in the cutoff. Because I was on the button last hand, so I'm, I'm one to the right of that. Yeah, probably flatting, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of a weird spot. Okay. All right, that's what I did. Especially, I, I, especially I since you just three bet the other hand, you could get blown off a pretty good Pretty decent hand here. That's what somebody, I was thinking. Somebody, I thought, could, somebody could four bet uh, light, and you kind of, I mean, you don't have to fold it. You could rip it, but. Yeah, okay, okay. That that was, I, I'd been pretty active, and, you know, it was from catching hands, but they don't know that. And uh, um, so I flatted. Okay. Um, let's see. Button folds, small blind folds, and then the girl in the big blind, she calls. The girl from the previous hand. Uh, we go to a flop. And the flop is queen of clubs, uh, three of diamonds, three of hearts. So I flop top pair with, uh, I got two pair now, uh, queens and threes with an ace kicker. Okay. Uh, you had, you, you had like 22k to start this hand, am I guessing about right? You had a little over 50 big blinds? Yeah, I want to say I had, uh, 21 to 23, something like that. Okay. You know? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit more than 20, but not much. Um, the girl checks, uh, the under the gun razor, he checks, and then the guy on my right, he bets, uh, he bet 25. Okay. He bets 25. Uh, what are you doing at this point? Are you calling? Are you raising? Or Um, probably just calling. Okay. I mean, th- yeah, th- I, this is, this is one of those, you know, standard, um, I mean, it depends on the guy, but if he's barely, if he's someone who's not going to give up on a pot when she puts any money in, he definitely could be continuing on the turn with worse. Um, he's o- he's almost never flatting aces or kings, so, I mean, you've, you've got the best hand. He shouldn't have any threes in his range, so you should have the best hand, you know, 19 out of 20 times here, and I guess there's no reason to blow it, blow him off of it, especially if there's no draws out there. There's no flush draw, right? No, no flush draw. Um yeah, I mean it's a little. Uh, yeah, I, I, I lean towards the flat. Okay, a little history on this guy. He uh, he was probably my age, maybe thirty five, no more than forty. Uh, came from San Diego. Asked him if he knew you because he said he played at Oceans, and he's like, no, I, I haven't. Uh, I don't know who he is. And then he was talking about how um, Daniel Negreanu wasn't that great a player, but um, uh, who the hell did he say was a really good player? Um, Volpe, uh, what, right. what, what's his first name? Paul. I can't remember. His name. Paul Volpe is uh, such a sick player, and this and that, and he's so much better than any of these other guys. And he talked about how he used to play for a living in Vegas, and then he went down to San Diego, and now he plays part time and does some computer stuff on the side. And uh, he was extremely active. Just to give you an idea, he bought in about two and a half or three hours late, and then this first hand he was all in. So don't know what he had. The other guy folded, but. This guy was throwing his chips around all over the place, and uh, I didn't think he'd be around too much longer. Well, that was, that was my impression. Th- that might be an argument for raising then, if he's going to, if he's, if he's, you know, if he's got queen ten, queen jack, queen king in his range, or if he's going to just like, 
shove pocket eights or nines and just try to like you know thinks that he's just gonna he's the, he's the boss poker pro and he's just gonna shove you off a nice hand. I I figured just judging from how I'd watched him play for the last hour and a half, uh, he if he fired the flop, he usually fired three streets. And uh, I'm trying to think. I think twice he got raised and he folded. So that that was the info I had. Was um, I was afraid if I raised, like you said, he would fold. I didn't think he was flatting aces there. I didn't think he was flatting kings. Um, unlikely he has queens because I've got one of them. And um, so on the other hand, though, there is there is about probably seven k in the pot right now, which is like a thirty percent boost to your stack. So that you know that would be another argument for just raising and you know taking it down. Um, but uh, yeah, my, I think my first instinct and your first first instinct, especially against this villain. Is just uh, flat, and uh, hope no king comes on the turn. I guess. <laughs> you know, I yeah, that's that's the one card I didn't want to see was a king, um, and uh, you know, ace or queen, obviously. And I feel pretty good, <laughs> even better about my hand. But uh, um, yeah, I didn't want to see a king. Um, yeah, so for those those reasons, I flat, and then uh, uh, the big blind, the girl folds, and the end of the gun uh, raiser he folds. So we go heads up to the turn. And the turn is uh, a blank. It's, it was either like a... It completed the rainbow, and it was either a four or a five. I think it was a four. Okay. Because I remember thinking if if he has something like a, a five, six, then now he just picked up an open ender or something. Um, this guy was loose. And uh, so anyways, um, now he fires 4,700. Into a pot of about 9,500, or about just about half pot, it sounds like, right? Yeah, right about half pot. Well, obviously you're calling. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't, uh, unless he's going to call with a weakish queen here. There's, you know, you're not, should, he should be folding um, everything. But again, you know, the argument is there's just, uh, there is a lot of money in the pot. And, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't see any reason not to just call, I guess. You know. Okay. Okay, I called. Um, so now, let me see. You you got 900 and 2,500 and 4,700 in there. So I'm, I mean, you got uh, you still have about 15K behind here, right? Uh, a little bit less than that. I think I've got uh, maybe 12. Let's see. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Um, you know, the specifics. The, the, the exact numbers don't. I'm just trying yeah. to... You got you got a little bit less than half your your chips in the pot though. Yeah. I mean, I guess yeah. I guess you're pretty much pot committed regardless of what the river is, but just throwing you know just trying to see what that is. Okay, so uh, you call. I call. Uh, you know what? I just added it up right now. Probably Seven thousand. Yeah, I probably have twelve uh, k behind something like that. Okay. Um, and uh, then the river is uh, seven of clubs. Okay. And he moves all in. I'd seen him do this uh, several times moving all in. One time he never got called. Um, the one time he did get called, uh, he took the same line and he had pocket fives and he hit a set of fives on the river. Hmm. But I don't know how much you can put into that. Uh, well, I think none of it really matters now. You've you've got a huge pot. You've got the top pair, top kicker, and um, yeah, you just can't let this pot go. It's 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 calling whatever, calling twelve okay. tw- calling twelve thousand to win thirty thousand or whatever whatever the hell it is. I don't even know. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I think right. I mean, I mean, unless you know, you're a guy who talks about live reads a lot. I don't, even though I call myself a field player, and I mean, I. I Never really break it down. I just kind of go mind by gut sometimes, whether they like their hand or not. But I mean, what was your first reaction? Were you like, "Fuck, this guy has has it"? Or how you know, quickly? How quickly did he act? He acted uh, pretty quick. I would say within about two seconds. Yeah, that's quick. That's quick. Yeah. Uh, My feel was was that he thought he had the best hand. Hmm. Now, um, but what my brain kept telling me was nothing makes sense. You know, aces and kings don't make sense to me. 
unless he flattered with aces there, but that's just not like him, you know, at least from what I've seen him play so far, but who knows, people mix it up. Um, but none of the hands that I could pull uh, made sense, you know. Right, quad quad threes maybe, I'm not, <laughs> you know. Even flatting there, though, with threes, I think, is bad. Uh, probably, yeah. You know, with the shorter stacks behind in, in the, in the, on the button and the uh, small blind, it, uh, I couldn't pick a hand that made sense. And maybe I should have gone with my live read, cause I, well, I went with, uh, I, he thought he had the best hand. But then on the other side of the coin, I'm like, well, he might think he has the best hand with King Queen or Queen Jack there, I don't know. Um, that have been pretty active too. Not nearly as active as him. But Queen Jack, he's he's definitely like turning into a bluff here. You can't think that. Yeah. You can't think that is good. Or even like even well, if he's got Queen King or King Queen Jack or Queen King Queen, I mean, he should be check calling or check folding. I would think, but uh, you never know. It's one of those things. Of course, if he is going to check, if he is if he is going to call your shove, then it's, it's better just for him to shove himself. Even if it's a weakish queen, but uh, yeah, he could be giving a few chips away. You might only bet seventy seven hundred on the river, and he could, even if he's planning on calling, he can save himself four k in chips. But um, yeah, with with no draws out there, your hand looks pretty face up. I mean, you've got a queen. Yeah. So um, yeah, I I don't know. I mean, I think you got to call. There's just too many chips in there. Although yeah, although if you fold, you still got. You know, twenty five, thirty bigs. I think, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I might be able to find a fold. You know, ten left in a tournament where the average stack is, you know. Yeah, I mean that that shouldn't matter, of course. But uh, yeah, I'm not folding here. Okay, okay. I didn't either. I uh, I called and uh, he flipped over pocket sevens. So he took the exact same line that he did with the pocket fives. <laughs> <laughs> you just sat on the river. <laughs> nice, Steve, you jackass. How 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 did you not? No, obviously, I think you. Uh, I think you played. Yeah. I, I think you played it fine. I, I think you did, those are just two hands where you. Okay. Kind of ran. Okay. You kind of ran into it. Um, obviously, in retrospect, you know, if you raise either uh, flop or turn, you take it down. Flop or turn, he's he's done. Yeah. And there was a lot of chips in there. And the way you're describing it, you liked your table. You were playing well. You were uh, stealing some pots. So, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't, but like you said, you've seen him fire three streets. So if he's someone who's capable of three feet, uh, three firing three streets on a bluff, um, then yeah, just flatting, you know, flatting the turn makes, you know, makes the most sense. I, I was, I felt so sure I was ahead the whole way. I didn't want to blow him off his hand. I wanted to get it as much value as I could. And then on the river, I thought, he thinks he has the best hand right now. Well, what makes sense? Nothing makes sense here. And, uh, yeah, maybe I should have gone with my read there. Maybe I was kind of shaken up by the, by my misread with the nines that, um, I don't know. I was questioning my, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I you, know. you could even argue again, the under the gun raise, um, that if somebody flats that this should be a three better fold that you don't want to, uh, that you don't want to see a flop yeah. with this either. You know what I mean? Yeah, like okay. four or five ways because you know, as it turns out, you got the perfect flop, but yeah. you could you could get um, you know, queen ten deuce of hearts, you know, one of those kind of things where you know two people yeah. make a, a run at the pot and you're like, uh, you know, I probably still could be good here. You know, somebody's got a flush draw, someone's got a weaker eight queen. Yeah. So um, yeah, you can argue that you could just let that one go even. Depending on how active the uh, the opener's been, and the, you know the likelihood of uh, I don't know, Ace Queen's a pretty hand. It's hard to let that go, especially on that board. That was uh, no draws, no nothing out there. I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, again, it shouldn't. Ma each hand should be like independent, independently played. It shouldn't really matter on the previous hand. But you know, you just lost a pretty good sized pot. You got fifty big blinds. You know, you maybe maybe yeah. Maybe, you maybe, know what? Maybe, maybe I should just, have uh, uh, maybe just let that one go. Yeah, I, you know, I was thinking about that after with the queens. I, my mind wasn't quite right because I was after she showed the ace of diamonds. That that's normally a point where I get up and and you know, as you call it, walk around the table. You know what I mean? Just like 
walk away for a hand, come back, and make sure you're clear before you play the next one. And uh, maybe I should have done that there. I, uh, right. Well, you got to see a flop with a with a premier hand and hit the flop, and you know we're good the whole way. So it's uh, just unlucky, yeah. really. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was wondering if he would do the same thing if he didn't hit his seven. He said he wouldn't. He said he said yeah I was shutting down unless I hit a seven. Yeah, I think uh, I mean it, it looks that. like <laughs> it looks like you're you've got an, a queen and you are pot committed. Yeah. I'd be wondering. This is one of those. Uh, Carlos is so good talking about pre-flop ranges. I mean, I, that's one of those spots where I'd like I'd much rather have like pocket sixes than ace queen. You know what I mean? Because you're deep enough to set mine. And it's one of those things where you're going to be, you know, it's going to be very easy on the flop. You're either, you're, it's, you, you either have a monster or you have nothing for yeah. the most part. I mean, if you have three, four, five, and, but in multi-way, if you're seeing it four ways. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, I mean, as it turns out, you got the perfect flop for queens and you're, you're, you know, you're so sure that you're, especially after the, the end of the gun raiser folds, obviously. Yeah. You're pretty confident yeah. you got the best hand. So, um, so that was it, huh? That was it, yeah, yeah. I've got a, I've got another interesting hand, uh, at least as far as live reads go. Uh, this was from the first one I played, the Venetian Deep Stack, the one I uh, got 38th in. Um, I got, uh, let's see, the levels are 200-400 with the 50 ante. Um, and the villain is, in this hand, uh, he's in, <clears throat> um, let's see, he's in middle position. He raises up to 1,200, which is three bigs. Um, and he's a, he's a 45-year-old guy. He travels a lot. He looks like he does pretty well for himself. Um, knows how to play cards, but plays a little bit too loose and makes bad folds. You know, like he'll... Um, um, he folded kings on a queen-high uh, flop. Uh, the other guy showed ace-queen. I would have called with kings there. Um yeah, so he he is able to lay hands down, which is which is kind of prevalent to this. Uh, he travels to Dubai, talks about how you know you can get girls over there for all night for like two grand or something like that. And I'm thinking to myself, well, that doesn't sound like. Do you have his phone number? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh, grab okay. It. I would I would call him business associate is what I would. Okay, but anyways, <laughs> and uh, so he raises twelve hundred late position calls. Uh, uh, 1200. And I've got, uh, Jack of Diamonds, Jack of Hearts, the two red jacks in the small blind. Now what, uh, what would you do here? Would you, would you just flat or would you raise or? How many, uh, how many big blinds do you have? Uh, probably 50. 50? Um, yeah, I'm probably just flatting out of position. Hmm. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, obviously you're ahead of both the opening and the flatting range. But um playing jacks out of position can be dicey. It's one of those things if it's twenty five big blinds, it's 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 to me it's pretty easy. It's three bet, call it off. But with fifty, uh I'm never really I mean you gotta ask yourself, what are you doing if they four bet? They pop it back. Probably fold you're it. Not Maybe calling. Uh, I was gonna say you can't be calling. You gotta, either got a five bet rip or or fold. Yeah, I think. Um, if you're calling, you're basically just trying to set mine then, or or bluff on a. On a yeah, or I don't know. Like you know, again, um, us internet guys, we, we're used to having answers there. You know how often they fold the three bets, <laughs> how often <Yes>. they. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, you're gonna take it down a lot, a lot of times with a three bet, and um, obviously folding is the only one we're not we're not considering here. No, no. I, I like to, I like to know, you know, I like to have a feeling against my competition and know if I'm going to be fifty big blinds. I think in a tournament is just too much to get it in with jacks. So if yeah. I'm not willing to call the four bet rip, then I'd rather just flat because I want to see a flop with jacks. Okay, maybe this is where I'm playing too big a pot because uh, I three bet. Uh, I three bet to uh, thirty one hundred. So he raised twelve late position, called twelve. Um, he'd been very active though. That by the so way, is, sure. it's really small sizing there. Ah, is it too small? You think? Okay, it should be like yeah. I mean, normally if with one razor, 
you know, you'd be raised at a position you'd be raising to like three X, you'd be raising like thirty six hundred. So with another person in the pot, uh, that's good. really yeah. I would make it like forty eight to fifty five hundred even. Uh, uh, okay. So yeah, yeah I, I, I really, I really don't like your your sizing there. Although to them that could be look like you're at the very top of your range that you got like aces or kings and you're trying to keep them in the pot or induce a shove or something. But yeah. um, yeah, that sizing is definitely. You said twelve hundred to thirty one hundred. Yeah. I mean they're, yeah. they're getting a ridiculous price to call that. You get twenty four fifty five plus plus the the big blind fifty nine hundred plus the antes so the over six thousand so they're the you know they're they're getting over three to one for a call so they're they're almost both obligated to call. Well, there's there's uh, with the blinds and antes uh, there's a uh, thousand fifty in the pot and then with those two uh, with the twelve hundred and twelve hundred that's uh, three. Thirty-four fifty in the pot, plus plus your plus your raise. Oh, plus my raise. Yeah, you're right. Okay. I think my numbers are about right. Yeah, but um, there's over six thousand in the pot. And they only got to, got to call seventeen hundred, so they're getting yeah three and a half to one. Um, so that's the thing that jumps out at me right away in that hand. Okay. Um, All right. It's either yeah you got to raise bigger there I think. Okay. But I mean unless you know you're trying to find out where they where if unless you think these guys are going to play face up and they're only going to four bet you know massive hands then I guess you could say you're set you're save you have saved yourself money if you were planning on folding to a four bet because you've put the minimum in. But yeah that that would be a very non-standard uh raise size there. Okay. It should be probably okay. four, yeah 4 4 to 5x I think. Especially out of position. Okay. But anyways uh so you raise I raise um the guy in late position, he calls with a lot of stuff, so I, I figured he could have like nine seven suited here. Um, he was total calling station, very rarely raised unless he had it. Uh, this guy, the the guy from who traveled to Dubai, uh, the villain, the whoremonger. Yes, he uh, <laughs> he um, uh, he raises with a really wide range, so I was pretty sure if he didn't four bet me, I was ahead. Uh, he called. The villain called. Late position folded. So now we got uh, 8250 in the pot, uh, and the flop comes down ace two eight rainbow, and uh, it's on me. What uh, what would you do at this point? I kind of like this is a spot where I like kind of check raising. I mean, again, it's pricier if he has ace king, because rather than just c betting 4400, you're you're check raising to 13k. I mean, how much? Well, how many chips do you have to start? <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, forty, about twenty k. Well, yeah, I guess you got to see bet, and then, but you know, like you're you're so, especially if it's a guy with a lot of money, <laughs> you know, who's on the looser side. If he's decent at all, he can float with the, he can float with anything, and and know you're going to sh- probably shut it down on the turn. So th- this is a spot where I like to I I do like to check raise quite a bit. That's for some reason that's just the first thing that jumps in my mind. It looks just so much stronger than the C bet. Although it depends on what kind of player. A lot of these players, if if you think they're going to be if they don't have an ace, they're always going to fold. Then uh, yeah, C bet it and hopefully take it down. Okay, I my read when the flop hit. I probably should have said this before was that um, that he liked it. He 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 liked the ace. Is is. I don't know if his eyes moved or kind of got wide or what it was, but I, I thought he had an ace, and so um, so I checked and he bet three thousand, and I thought I might be able to get him off it. I don't know if it was the kings that he folded before to the queen high board or what it was. I think he did not want to look dumb, is is what it really boiled down to, because he was talking about how much poker he played and these tournaments he'd won, and you know, he was kind of the guy that was always talking at the table, and I, I think he did not want to look dumb, was was part of it. Uh, but I called, um, thinking I might be able to uh, uh, take it away from him. Okay, what is he right now? You just got to stop though. It looks like you don't have an ace, probably. Okay. Or you're slow playing ace king. Okay. You know what I mean? It looks you, your hand seems kind of have kind of face up there. Okay. That's why I like either c betting and saying I have an ace or. Uh, or check raising. check raising and saying, uh, you know, sorry, I've I've got an ace and I'm ready to get it in here, which would be kind of pricey with your stack, obviously. You know, you got to click it back for half here, but um, yeah, I I don't check raise that often, 
but um, it's often in uh, like spots just like this. Like there's one over, there's you know, my range is stronger than his range because I three bet, and um, that ace hits. Shouldn't have that many, you know, aces in his range, really, because ace king and ace queen is is this guy the sort of guy who's going to get it in, or not necessarily? Uh, I think he would have four bet with ace king, possibly ace queen. You gave him such a great price, though. I mean, even ace jack, ace ten, su- any suited ace. Um, he's I th- he, he, just he's got with he's, the size that I made it. I think he's going to call with any ace. Yeah, I think he's he's probably going to. So. Um, Okay, so three thousand. You call. I call. The turn. Uh, so now we got a little over fourteen k in the pot. Fourteen two fifty, and the turn is the king of clubs. And so now there's two clubs on the board. It's a uh, ace two eight of clubs, and then the king of clubs. And at this point, uh, I check again, and he bets uh, three thousand again, the same bet that he did on the flop. And at this point, he, it, it really now looks to me like he has a weak ace. And um, a couple of reasons for that is one, his look on the flop, and then his same bet on the turn. And I remember listening to, uh, I think it was Jonathan Little, and he said that whenever, um, you know, a non-pro makes one bet on the flop and then the same exact bet on the turn, it usually means that he has like a marginal hand, something like top pair with a weak kicker or like middle pair. And so at this point, um, I went with what I felt, and so I check raised him. He bet three thousand, and I re raised to, uh, I check raised him to eleven thousand five hundred. And he thinks for a while, and then he uh, um, he folds and he shows uh, he shows an ace. And then, um, yeah, that was uh, that was how that one played. I basically, as soon as the ace came out, I knew that my pair of jacks were basically seven five. <laughs> you know, there was nothing. Right. But um, well, if that was your first instinct, I would have been. If you felt pretty strongly he's gonna have an ace, I'd be just check folding and being stack preservation. You know, but uh, yeah, you played it well. You took it down. Um, when you flatted on the uh, the flop, was that kind of your plan, or th- would this just come to you kind of by instinct? It, it was his bet sizing on the turn that made you raise. It was the bet sizing on the turn that made me sure that my read on the flop was right. Right. You know, and I. Um, so he bet, if he if he bets six six thousand on the turn, you're obviously done with it. And if he bets six thousand on the turn, I'm not making the same. But it was because of his same bet that they was like okay. I, I was seventy percent sure on the flop that he had like an ace with kind of a weak, uh, weakish kicker because I think he would have uh, re-raised me or um, called faster than he did. Um, but then when he bet the same size on the turn, I'm like, no, I, I'm going with this one. And, uh, yeah, pretty poorly played by him. A weak ace should almost uh, should always be checking back there, unless you just you know unless you just. Uh, uh, unless you're committed to going with it, obviously, you know, bet small, and if he shoves, okay, F it, you know, I got I got a top pair. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we know that would be uh, for the amateur. Um, yeah, that that is a line I take where, where, like, my turn sizing sometimes seems a little too small trying to induce people, so, you know, you got to, but here you, you, uh, you saw it for exactly what it was, so. Congratulations, that, that, sounds, sounds, that was a nice pot. Yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one. That kind of propelled me up a little bit and got me uh, even further into the uh, into the tournament. Um, you know, I got another one from uh, there's the Rio Deep Stack. Um, after I placed uh, in the Venetian one and, and busted, it was at what time was it? I think it was we started at like eleven. And does this story involve Dubai hookers by any chance? No, it doesn't. Okay. Would you well, like it to? I'll, I'll pretend. I'll pretend to listen. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> After that, I went over the uh, Rio uh, Deep Stack. It started at three o'clock, and I think I got there around like three forty-five or something. And uh, uh, bought into that. Uh, I had a. This was kind of an interesting hand. Um, I, I didn't realize I used to play only the Rio Deep Stacks for the last like five years, and I never realized until this year how much of a turbo it is. Because oh, yeah. the blinds go up, they skip a lot of levels, it's 30 minutes, and 
Um, yeah, I mean, the blinds go from like four and eight hundred to six and twelve. And, you know, so if you're sitting there with twenty five big blinds, all of a sudden one hand later, you got fifteen. Oh, it's a it's a it's a turbo, right? I mean, to go through to go through twelve hundred people in one day. I mean, you know, it has to be. Yeah, <laughs> it was a turbo. Yeah. And uh, uh, anyways, I um, I had uh, sat down at this. Uh, I'd been. It was like I kept getting the end of the uh, of the of the row, you know. Like I'd, I'd get at one table, and then uh, an hour later they'd uh, bump me to like four tables, four tables up, and thirty minutes later, then I'd get bumped four more tables up, and they just kept breaking, you know. So this was like my third table, and uh, we're only uh, a few hours into it, and um, uh, I'd been at this table probably ten, fifteen minutes maybe, and villain. Um, and this hand had been really active, and the levels were four and eight hundred uh, with the one hundred ante, and so the standard raise size here was anywhere from min raise sixteen hundred to probably twenty one. Uh, I've got uh, twenty one thousand, okay. so I have twenty uh, six big blinds. Yeah. Twenty six bigs. Uh, this time when he raises, cause he'd been raising, uh, just in the 10 or 15 minutes that I was there, so we'd probably seen six to eight hands, um, maybe not even that many. He'd raised, um, uh, like four times. Okay. So he, he, he was above 50% for the short time I was there. Maybe he was getting hands, I don't know. But, uh, very active. And this time when he raised, instead of raising the normal mount, he just he grabbed uh, two yellow chips, so he grabbed two thousand chips, and then he just stuck his hand down on the um, on the black chips, the hundred the hundred chips, and he picked up as many as would fit in 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 one hand, and then he threw those out there into the pot uh, with the two yellow ones. Okay. So as I could tell, the raise looked to be like around thirty three to thirty five hundred. You know, he grabbed almost almost a, a full stack and, and threw it out there with the two yellow chips. Right. And um, anyways, it folds around to me. I'm in the big blind, and I've got uh, the two black fours. What would you do in this spot with uh, with that information? I'm sorry. What what position was he in? He was uh, under the gun plus two. Uh, fold. You fold. Okay. Um. Yeah, you can't really set mine here. It's not profitable. No. Uh, I mean, unless you have a read on the guy that he's just very, he's, you know, just very passive post flop, and if he doesn't have top pair, you can steal it from him. So you're not getting the right set mining odds. And, uh, yeah, I think shove or fold, probably. I mean, I, I guess the call is not terrible. I mean, you can, if you think you can steal it from him post flop. I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't know what to make of the bet sizing. I mean, if I if I tweak my bets, I'll make the the bet sizing a little higher, and of course it should be consistent. It usually means my hand's stronger, especially uh, especially against a weaker weaker table, who I think okay. is just not going to be paying attention, kind of thing. You know, oh, I've got king ten. I, yeah, I got to see a flop with this. You know what I mean? Okay. Might as well get a, a few more dollars in there, and maybe. Uh, Reduce the chances if you got the aces that, uh, you know, four or five people hit the flop. So, um, and that, you know, though also maybe the way he just picks it up and throws it in there like he doesn't give a shit. And I would also be tempted to think that's less a sign of weakness and more of a sign of strength that he's trying to look like he doesn't give a damn or he's, he's casual about the game. Okay. That's just my first instinct, but, uh, obviously you've got a shit ton of fold equity here and you got a pair. And, um, so, what what did you decide to do? Well, as quick as he did it, uh, I thought, okay, um, to me, his hand looked face up. It looked to me like ace-10 or ace-jack. Because with ace-king or ace-queen, I don't think he would have done that. He would have thought longer. He looked at it real quick, just grabbed two chips, and then palmed as many uh, of the black ones as he could and just tossed them out there. And I thought, I got a pair. I'm ahead of that, and maybe I'm wrong, and he did that with, like, pocket fives or pocket sixes. But well, 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 What's your read? Would he fold to a middle pair? Is he going to fold pocket eights to a shove here? I think eights he would call, but I think sevens and below he would fold. Yeah, I don't know how you can range him down to just, you know, ace-ten or ace-jack. 
And, you know, I, I'm always careful, too. If I have aces, say, you know, if someone raises under the gun and I have aces, if, if I have aces, UTG plus two or something, I don't want to sit there and look at the aces and double take, uh, double check and take more time than I normally would. I would try to just throw in a call as quick as possible. Or raise, I mean, you know, if you're, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not convinced that him moving so quickly would be a sign of, you know, again, it's player dependent, but, uh, like the fact that he's moving so quickly, um, yeah, with a lot of players, that's true. If they look at aces or kings, they're going to stop and think about it and maybe do a little theatricality. Do I want to be in this pot? Do I not want to be in this pot? And be re- and really think a little more deeply about their bet sizing. So, but yeah, my first instinct is just uh, just let it go. Well, just how he picks up the chips and throws it in there. I don't I don't know how that I would how I would range him differently than if he's been doing it a different way before. But you might be right. It looked to me like he had a hand that he felt like he should raise with, but he didn't want to do anything more than just win the blinds. And I felt like that was why he raised more instead of raising to like 21. Okay. Yeah, that's that was that was my thought was that he it's like he looks down ace 10 or ace jack. That's a pretty hand. I'm probably going to be out of position for this. You know what? I'm going to raise more just so that I can just win the blinds and go on to the next hand. And that that was that was what I got from from what he did. Okay. And if he's and if he's obviously folding some pairs and folding ace jack, then it's a highly profitable shove. I think so. Yeah. And uh, so I I thought for a while. I probably thought for thirty or forty seconds because as soon as I looked down, I'm like, oh, this is a fold. But I did I didn't move like I was going to fold. I I just looked at it and I'm like, oh, this is a fold. And I'm like, well, hang on, think about this for a sec. You, you have a pair. And uh, and then when I started thinking about it, I'm like, you know, his hand looks kind of face up here to me. You know, why would he raise like that if he wanted to get action, you know? And um, so anyway, so I shove. Um, and part of this had to do, too, with we're at four and 800 level, and I look over at the clock, and it's like a minute and 30 seconds. So within one hand or two, we're going to be right back up to uh, 600, 1200. Sure. And I'm going to have 15 bigs instead of 26. And uh, well, that would be that would be a, yeah, even a stronger argument for shoving there and, and taking 5k and adding it to your stack, you know. Yeah. And uh, uh, so I, I shove it in and uh, he flips over uh, ace jack offsuit and I hold. Now, I, I, I kind of want to run this one by you because I'm not sure if this is one of those things where I ranged his hand down so narrowly and I happen to be right. And so maybe I'm. Just kind of like, uh, how, how can I describe it? Like, uh, I'm reinforcing, uh, something that I'm not that good, you know, as far as like ranging hands and this just proved me right. So I think I am, but I don't know. Um, yeah, well, I mean, you don't know his calling range. My suspicion is that's probably, uh, one of the, maybe the weakest hand he's calling with, unless he's, call- he might be calling with ace 10 suited and king queen suited. I don't know. Okay. And, uh, but if he's calling, if he's calling with ace jack, he's definitely calling with pocket sixes. You know, that's a good point too. He could have had like uh, king queen suited. Um, yeah, he could have had that. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's a close to a neutral, you know, shove. But uh, you know, in, shove or fold yeah, might be equal about. Yeah, I, I mean, I I still like the fold there. From the you said he was UTG plus one. What was he? Uh, UTG plus two. UTG plus two. Um. Yeah, I'd be leaning towards the fold. Just try to preserve my fold equity. Um, okay. That's that. yeah. He, a bunch of people were surprised when I did that with fours, and uh, and then when he finally called and and showed the ace jack, um, he asked me. He's like, "How do you do that with fours?" And uh, before I could say anything, and I don't know what I would have said if I had answered, but uh, the guy just to his right said. Well, when you pick up uh, that many chips and just throw them in like that without even counting, he knows that you don't uh, want to see a flop with that hand, so it's probably pretty weak. He's got a pair. He's ahead, so why not? And I was like, you know, he said that pretty well. I think that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, he doesn't want to see a flop with pocket sevens either. Yeah, that's true. You know, so he could be putting that in. I mean, the question is... uh Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like, there your live read is relevant more than... uh like that I could say, but like I would be, of course, you know, pairs, pairs are good. 
Um, I would be much more likely to do that if, you know, like somebody else flatted probably. Cause, you know, then you're the, then uh, you know you got more chips in the pot. Of course, then you got two different people who can knock you out and call you too. But um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think it's a you know well I mean like I said those those four and a half five big blinds are not in, insignificant at this point. That's like a that's a significant little boost to your to your stack. So you know it was, I think it was a, a decent risk. And, you know it's hard to get a pair. You only get it one out of every seventeen hands. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you might have just got lucky to fall into the butt. But if, but if if you really think you can take the top of his range out, if he's if he's always kind of Pausing and taking time with ace king queens jacks kings aces you know if you're some if you can take those hands out of his range then uh, yeah it's definitely a very profitable shove if you, okay. if your read is correct there okay okay all right I got one more hand this is a quick one it uh, it's at the next level it's uh, six hundred twelve hundred two hundred uh, where uh, I just got uh, moved after that hand, the, the guy came around again. So I've been at this table for 15 minutes. Comes around with racks and says, uh, "Everyone, uh, go to your new table." So I go across the room this time, uh, I think to the white section, and um, we're at 600, 1200, 200 ante. Uh, I've been at this table for probably about 20 minutes or so. It's getting close to when the next level is going to go up, and the next level is uh, 800, 1600. Okay. And I've got uh, 36,000, so I've got uh, 30 bigs. Okay, that's a nice stack for this time of the tournament. It is, yeah, yeah. And uh, um, under the gun player, he's an older guy. He's, um, well, not too old. I mean, he's probably 55 if I had to put, like, one age on him. Uh, no more than 60. And, and no less than 50. So I'll say 55. Uh, he'd been pretty tight. Uh, he's talking about how, you know, I, uh, oh, I gotta find a, I gotta find a, something here and shove it and this and that, but I know in those spots, like, on the button and stuff, I would be shoving with, like, jack, you know, a jack with, like, a seven, and a, you know, he had, uh, seven bigs, and he's missing spots that I know he should be taking, you know? He's, he's seven um, big blinds under the gun. Seven big blinds under the gun. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I, I guess what I'm trying to say is is he's playing – he's not playing correct push fold. He's playing way too tight. Right. You know, he's uh, – you know, he'll have a weak ace in late position with nine bigs and not do anything with it but fold. You know, um, he uh, he's, he's not following the Nash chart at all. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> okay. So he's got uh, 7.25 bigs. He's got 8,700 under the gun. And I've been playing with him for about 20 minutes. And he'd been talking about this the whole time, how he needs to find a hand and needs to find a hand and like that. And uh, and then he shoves uh, seven and a quarter bigs under the gun. Okay. We're nine-handed. Um, I'm under the gun plus two, so under the gun plus one to my right, he folds. And then it's on me with 30 bigs, and I have ace-queen off suit. What do you do here? I I rip it in. Really? Okay. Rip it in and deal with the consequences. If somebody picks up a hand. If somebody picks up a hand. They pick up a hand. So you've got uh, one, two, three. You've got um, six players behind uh, you. Six players behind you. But you've also got uh, you know twelve, thirteen k in the pot. A third, a thirty, thirty, thirty-three percent boost to your stack, right? Okay. Eighteen hundred, okay. ninety-five hundred plus eighteen hundred. Well, you got a little over. Uh, you got ten thousand six hundred in the pot. Um, yeah, ace queen. Most people are gonna. Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, e- even if people are calling with hands like you know nines or tens, that's not awful. Um, I mean, if you know, obviously sometimes you're gonna someone behind you is gonna have a monster hand, or you're gonna, someone's gonna call with a pair, and the, the under the gun guy is gonna have an ace, and you're gonna be you know not have a shit ton of equity, but. Uh, yeah, I'm never flatting there. That much I know. Okay. I, I mean, l- yeah. uh, unless you, unless you're flatting to induce, unless you're flatting to call a shove. And um, see, I think that's bad if you uh, um, if you just flat there. I, I felt the same way. I, th- I think flatting's bad. Um, yeah, and you know, and, and if somebody if you flat and someone else flats, 
then you've got, uh, I'm definitely ripping any flop, maybe sounds crazy, but at that point there's going to be 27K in the pot, and you're going to have almost exactly the pot size bet, and I'm just, I'm sorry, I just need that pot at this point of the tournament. Uh, okay. Maybe that's kind of crazy too, because you still have over 20 bigs, but, um, so whether you, whether you flat or ship, like I said, well, well neither of us like flatting, um, I don't know. I, I think it's a rip, but but I guess if this guy you're saying is is so tight uh, that his that he's only at this point he's maybe even not even shoving a baby pair. You're saying. I mean, what 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 is? I guess obviously that's the obvious question. What is his his range of hands you're putting him on here to shove? I would say he's shoving um, fives plus, ace jack plus. He's not. He's really. He's not maybe the, ace ten. I think he would fold ace nine. You don't think he's uh, sh he's not shoving king ten suited here? Maybe like queen ten or uh, uh, king queen. Um, man, I mean, you know, he just the the spots that he should shove, you know, like before, like he'd be like, oh man, I folded I folded a weak ace there, and you know, I just needed something a little bit more, and I'm like. Bro, you have nine bigs and you were in the Well, if you have a, a table big. where people are making a lot of folding errors, that could be a strong argument for just folding here and just, you know, you're going to make so many, uh, win so many chips just uh, just ripping it on people who are, you know, just don't know the, the shove fold stuff. But, um, uh, but I, I don't know. My first. Well, the other, the other guys weren't bad, but he was definitely the one that, that was, um, he was definitely the soft spot at the table. You know, he's just playing way too tight. Um, I'm still leaning to rip it in here, but I mean, if you if you think his his range is that narrow, where you only have the ace jack, you only have you know, um, you only got twelve hands, so you're definitely ahead of if he's even folding some the Broadway combinations and stuff. I can't imagine him being that tight. I mean, he's got to be somewhat aware that. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Maybe maybe I gave him too much, uh, or didn't give him enough credit. Um, but like you said, I don't know. I mean, if, if this is, uh, you know, if three quarter, this is a big tournament for him, you know, maybe, I mean, like three quarters of the field is gone. This is exciting. He's running deep and he's just looking down at, uh, you know, he's looking down at queen, king queen off and, or ace, like you said, ace nine or ace 10. And he's like, I, uh, I'm going to find a better spot. Yeah. I don't, I, to me, it felt like I almost wish I had. 25 bigs or I had like 50 because I felt like having 30 was I couldn't flat I felt like with 50 bigs I could flat and with 25 I could rip but I felt with like 30 it just felt I thought I was only going to get called by better than ace queen if if I shove at uh, right absolutely yeah right and uh, I don't know I, I folded I folded Okay. Um, did his he, uh, did his shove get through? His shove got through, yeah. Um, uh, and then uh, once he got through, I thought, well, maybe I missed some value there. <laughs> you know, if you were in late position, if you were, you know, cut off or button, I think it's a must shove at that point. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah, if I if I was in uh, late position, then that would. And have it's been pretty. Easy, it's uh, pretty uncomplicated. But. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I had a similar a similar one in the Planet Hollywood, under the gun shove, and I was UTG plus one, and I folded Ace Queen, and then okay. um, somebody in later position called with Ace Jack, and the guy had like King Queen or something, and got the Ace Jack one. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, in those swift moving, um, normally you say we'll find a better spot, this, that, the other thing, and those swift moving, you know, in the turbos. You know, if you're ahead of the guy's range, you're ahead of the guy's range, and you you rip it in. I think you got to take those spots. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, it's it's a it's a it's a marginal spot, I guess, because he's uh if he's if he's as tight as you say. Yeah. Uh, okay. So what is what is the your poker plan? When are you uh, leaving town? You got a few more tournaments on. Uh... Yeah. Um... You know, I hadn't I hadn't even thought about what I'm going to play tomorrow or Friday because uh, this this one that I bageled today was a uh, uh, was a three day event and um, 
uh, with my little bit of cash, I've, I've still got, I think, like a grand or 1100 left. And, um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, put, I came out here with 1500 and I think I'm gonna play, uh, um, I'm gonna play, uh, tomorrow and Friday. I don't know what the, yet though, I haven't even, uh, the schedule. Yeah, I haven't even looked it up. I, di- I didn't want to think past, uh, 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 past this tournament because I wasn't sure, you know, what, uh, if I went all three days, then I wouldn't have to worry about it. <laughs> there might be like but, a uh, there might be like a four hundred dollar at the Venetian or a three hundred dollar Planet Hollywood. You know, look at the schedule and see what's see what's good. Yeah, I uh, I think I like the ones that start around like eleven or noon because then you don't get home at you know four o'clock in the morning. Um, but uh, the the places that I've been looking at are um, uh, what are the good ones? Uh, Aria has a series going. Um, Bellagio does too, but they're all uh, one case and stuff. And I fired my, uh, I shot my wad for that one. Um, Golden Nugget, uh, Venetian, obviously, Planet Hollywood. You know, Planet Hollywood, I, I, I like the room, but you have to park so far away from the room that, that, uh, from the poker room that I can't go down to my car and like get something to eat and then come back up to the, uh, up to the poker room in the 15 minute break. And whereas the Venetian and all the other places, it's it's really easy. You can walk out there, go to your car, spend like you know five or ten minutes, and then get back to the room in no time. You're such a goddamn nit. Just buy yourself some beef jerky. <laughs> Actually, I have a bunch of beef jerky. I made it. <laughs> but uh, you make your own beef jerky. I make my own beef jerky. Yes, I've pro- I probably brought uh, uh, I don't know a uh, couple pounds. Wow. Of uh, beef jerky. Uh. And, uh but I make these smoothies. I make these smoothies, and I keep them in a cooler in the car. And then when I go out uh, to the car, then I'm able to down one every uh, every other break. I have basically like a 400 calorie uh, meal, and then I go back in. But at Planet Hollywood, I get to carry all the shit in my backpack, and you know, after several hours, it's like warm and nasty, and I just ugh, I don't like it. Right. So maybe maybe that's maybe I'm being too particular about that, but. I like my routine and I have my ritual and and when it gets screwed up by them not being able to park close to <laughs> not being able to park close to the room, well, I'd rather just play somewhere just else. Just running downstairs and getting a Gatorade instead was would be my. But you you are a man of rituals. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and like yeah. hugging yourself and looking in the mirror prior to poker sessions and everything else. There's. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to make of you, Steve. Um, <laughs> So I'm debating whether to uh, come back next week, actually, and play, or just or okay. just wait till the main event. I think if I come back next week and were to like you know bagel a few tournaments to use your, uh, you know, that might put a damper on my main event thing where I might want to sell off a bigger piece of myself. Like maybe I should just kind of be trying to step away and relax the maximum and you know spend the most time with my son possible. But the World Series of Poker only comes around once a year. And uh, and I've got a backer, and uh, there's some decent tournaments this week. I forget there's a 2500 and a 1500 and a, I think a three thousand dollar six max. I'd really love to play in the five thousand dollar turbo. Mm. That's like you know that's a pretty big buy, and so I haven't even talked to my backer. Of for all I know, they're uh, you know they they now have forty um, percent of me in the main event. They might not want to they might not want any more of me than anything else. So well, so I definitely do, would not even bother. Ask coming next week unless I could sell half my action for whatever, you know, that is nine thousand dollars buy in. Um so that'll that'll be a factor too. I'll have to think about that. But uh looks like I'm definitely coming back for the main event, for sure. I know. Yeah. I know. Cool. And uh yeah, you know, whatever, I'm home. Back to reality. You know, I got some uh, I went to a doctor, I got some sleeping pills today. Oh, did you need them? I thought that was interesting. You know, my, my brother, I had a couple of tweets about three hours sleep last night. And my brother's <laughs> like, you might have lost money because of that shit, you know. Yeah. And I didn't really think about that because I'm so used to playing poker when I'm tired and then still. And But you never... Can't you, can't you just get sleeping pills at like Vons or whatever? Uh, I don't know. What, I mean, what do you, what do you, you can get like Benadryl. Maybe like Tylenol PM or whatever? Uh, I don't think that works as well as like sleeping pills. But anyways... My my main event preparation. That's about the extent of it. Okay. <laughs> and um, yeah, I don't know what else is. Uh, I don't know what else is shaking on my end. You know, I'm just lazy. I got a bunch of shit I got to figure out. I got to do some taxes, and 
got to figure that kind of stuff out. And, um, you know, I'm not going to try to go through one one podcast without bitching about, so what am I going to do with my life here? But that's, uh, it was nice to get the, I mean, I love meeting some of the guys out in Vegas for sure. That was cool. And that was cool. you know what I mean? Like, w- w- I mean, we've had the same conversation a hundred times here. You know, how do you, how do you make it as a poker pro? And there's some people who have definitely, who are definitely doing it. Yeah. Whether they're just smarter and better than me, I think might be, might be part of the component, but they, they have kind of, Gotten certain things figured out, you know. So I, I got some. Uh, well, I wasn't even asking for advice, but just listening to people talk about, you know, their poker and you know their their hourly and this and that and what they do to maximize their profits and you know. Um, so I, I definitely learned some. Other than just you know having some good results out there, I'm I'm positive about poker for some for a few other reasons, you know. And uh, I don't know if I'm gonna if I don't go to Vegas next week if I'll go back to the online grind and give that a shot. And uh, I don't know. I might be up on Twitch soon. Everybody's concur- everyone there. And that was the one thing that everybody agreed upon that I should be twitching. Yes, yes, you should. <laughs> you should. Well, good. Um, good. I don't know. Should I should I discuss one hand real quick or? Uh, yeah, let's do it. Okay. Um, I'm gonna not even. I'm gonna give the spoiler right away and not even. No, 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 don't, 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 don't give the spoiler. <laughs> it ruins it. <laughs> well, go for, go for the hand analysis. I want to get this off the cuff. Okay. So you get a you get a true uh, perspective from me. If it, it, it'll taint my uh, uh, my uh, uh, okay, you know my comments. Okay. Well, this this one was all up on the the WSOP blog and stuff. So most people who know me are probably listening to this kind of already uh, already know the hand. Um, but what was interesting about it is. Uh, it's kind of, you know, the, the, well, we already know that no poker hand, or some, well, some poker hands, there's definitely a right answer, a wrong one. But this is one that I bounced off several, several pros, and they all had, or a lot of people whose opinion I, I respected, and they had some people that had some very different answers about how to play this. Hmm, okay. So this is the Millionaire Maker, day three, and we're getting down, we're down to the final five tables. Okay. It's money time. And, uh... My chips, I've been kind of, uh, I was r- real unlucky for a lot of the day and was slowly, was slowly chipping down. I think that, but then, uh, I got aces a couple times and got a couple doubles up and went from like the brink to back up to a pretty decent chip stack. Okay. And I think I immediately bluffed a few hands and lost some chips again. But anyways, to start this hand, it's at, uh, 15,000, 30,000 with a 5,000 ante. And I am in the hijack position, and it folds to me, and I have pocket nines, and I have about uh, 950,000 chips, so about 32 big blinds left. All right, 950K, you said? Yeah. And uh, what is that? Uh, pocket nines. 30, 31 big, something like that? Yep. Okay. I don't know if you need to. I don't know if the specific numbers will be, but, yeah, I guess they're... Um. So I'm obviously raising this hand. Yes. It's folded to you, right? It's folded to me. Okay. And uh my sta- I'm do my I think my this has been my standard raise has been uh, I raised to 65,000. Okay. Cut off folds. Uh the button calls. Villain number 1 the button. I wish I could remember the specifics about him. I think he had, uh, I had him out chipped, and he was a younger guy, seven or eight hundred thousand in chips, I'm gonna say. I, th- I don't think he had been at the table long, but my theory was just, you know, young guy, probably aggressive, probably, you know, uh, you know, GTO, um, you know, competent, you know, most people running deep in this tournament were pretty good. There's a lot of superstars. This guy did not know, but, and, and, so he calls the 65. And in the small blind is uh, Olivier Bousquet, Fam- famous, okay. famous, of course, player, one of the top guys out there. He is, yeah. He's actually the reason I think I play poker. I think I've gotten into that before. Mm-hmm. Um, and he calls. Okay. And the big blind folds. Okay. So we got 65,000 times 3 is 195,000, and the big blind that folded is 225,000, and another 45,000 in ante, so we have 270,000 in the pot, I believe. I'm going off my head here, but I don't know if you, you're scribbling along, if that sounds about right. Uh, that sounds pretty accurate. 
And the flop is a six of diamonds, a three of diamonds, and a two of hearts. Okay. Say that again. Six of diamonds, three of diamonds, two of hearts? Yeah. It's definitely two diamonds on the flop. Okay. And I'm ashamed to say I do not... I'm pretty sure I have... um like the nine of hearts and a black king, a black nine. I don't think I have the nine of diamonds. So that people ask me afterwards, how do you not remember if you had a diamond or not? And I, I'm ashamed to say I cannot remember exactly. Okay. But I don't think it would have greatly altered my decision making here. No, I don't think. I mean, just slightly. Well, we gotta, no, not, gotta, a, not a whole bunch. Got to see how the hand plays out, but yeah. Okay. All right, and it's uh, it's on the it's on Olivier. What's uh, what's he do? Uh, he checks. Okay. My read on the situation is. Uh, and uh, oh, and now it's on you. Now it's okay, on me. Thinking. My read on the situation. I don't know. If, like I said, I haven't been playing the, the guy a lot, but I, I'm I'm greedy here. I, I'm taking big pairs out of the buttons range, and I think I've got him beat. And if I check to him, I think he's a player who's almost always. Um, Gonna take a shot at it. Ah, okay. That's my so that that is my plan here is to check jam, um, the button who I have okay. who I have covered. I mean, if he if he had won the hand, I would have been crippled down to like two hundred fifty thousand, probably eight or nine big blinds. Yeah. But uh, I think if I see bet, I'm taking it down a lot, and I want to be greedy here, and I think he's gonna take a shot. Well, obviously, if he checks back, then there's a lot of turn cards which I don't like. But that was, anyways, that was my plan, is to check jam. You know, and that's, I kind of like that. Um, because you're you're pretty sure he's going to bet. Like, what percentage of the time would you say he's going to bet the... Uh, I the mean, club? there's no, it, my, my prediction was right, so we can't really say... Okay. You know, how much that it's, uh, you know, my, my wisdom or my read is correct. Um a lot of people ask the same thing. Well, I mean, how do you know he's checking there? I'm like, well, I didn't. I just, you know, I just. You like, mean, how do you know he's betting? Like, how? Yeah, how do I know he's betting there? And I'm just like, you know, I. I, I don't know. I just felt it. Like, I, maybe you've, you've seen him in this situation so well, many times. Well, I haven't. I haven't got to see. I got to I haven't got to see him that much. Um, I just felt it'd be st- it'd be standard here because you know, uh, Olivier is probably it doesn't hit his range very well. Yeah. He should not be playing any like he could have a set, but he doesn't. He doesn't have two pair or a, a straight. There's no way he's calling with six three or four five from the small blind. From the big blind, perhaps when he's closing out the action. Yeah. But um, and it looks like I've had a big ace and missed, and I'm just kind of especially in a multi-way pot. Usually an over pair is always c betting there. Yeah. yeah. So any, anyways, that was my read. Um, like I said, I I not necessarily reading his hand strength. I mean, he could have he could have been slow playing queens, just like not want, wanting to see a flop with it or whatever. But I was willing to get it in with him, and I, I thought I was just going to be stealing money from him because I thought, you know, it looks like the two of us are weak and he can just steal a pot. Yeah, he's going to do that with uh, king queen or with jack ten or. Well, whatever. he's going to do he's going to do it with I, I, I he's just gonna, range. doesn't matter what he has. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah. my theory was he was going to do it seventy five plus percent of the time there. Okay. So I check and he bets um, eighty thousand, which is of course real small into that pot. Yeah, that's uh, really tiny. So um, it looks like he's you know really trying to steal it. Hmm. That might be kind of an overshoot if you do that. Okay, what's Olivier do when he does that? Olivier makes it two hundred and ten thousand. Unexpected. Well, actually, maybe not. How much did you say? Two hundred one. Two hundred and ten thousand. Olivier, by the way, has me covered. Uh, I want to say he started the hand with like one point two, one point three million, but um, not a, not you know, not a massive stack, by the way. I think the average right at this point is like one point four million or something like that. So we're all three of us in this hand are below average stacks at this point. Although none of us are none of us are short stacked either. Okay. Well, that kind of makes sense for uh, Olivier because uh, if he's thinking along the same lines that you are, that this guy's probably uh, going to do that with his whole range, he's the one that's most likely to have had something of that flop. Olivier or not. Olivier or the button? Olivier. Uh, well, I, I yeah, I, I just was saying the opposite. I mean, unless he's got a set. 
Um, like if it was 10-9, uh, yeah, I don't think he's, I, I, my read was, well, Olivier's never, never bluffing here. You don't think so? No. I, I think he, he could do that with, uh, like, um, ace three of clubs. He's basically turning it into a bluff, but he has something. Um, well, maybe not clubs, maybe, uh, Maybe I, I think he, with like the ace of diamonds and he's just and the, two of diamonds or something, or maybe like ace four of diamonds. Well, ace four of diamonds isn't a bluff; that's a monster hand. Well, it's a semi. I mean, he's got a, he's got a he's got a he's got a straight flush draw. Straight straight flush draw. I don't know. I, I wouldn't fold. I would jam it still. Um, yeah, but it just yeah, just to go with, I, I'm still sticking to my 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 read here that the button has has nothing, but uh, Olivia has got a hand here. I mean, there's no question in my mind. He's taking his time. He's thinking about his bet sizing. And, um, yeah, I, I just don't think he's ever bluffing there. He he has some sort of high equity hand. Um, again, he could have a set, but there's not that many combinations of sets in his range where there's a lot of combinations of diamonds or just a decent amount. Yeah. He's calling with, you know, ace, ten of diamonds, ace, jack, ace, queen of diamonds, uh, all the Broadway hands, queen, jack, maybe even queen, nine, nine, ten of diamonds. I don't know if he's calling with eight, nine, or the smaller diamonds. But um, I knew he was raising. I pretty, felt pretty strongly, and I knew he wasn't bluffing. But I just thought he had a draw. And um, I decided I was going to jam. I also liked that I jammed immediately. That was my plan. Like the second he puts the money in, I'm jamming right away. Okay. I thought this was, you know, um, I mean, I don't know if you're going to win like a leveling kind of thing, but it looks like I got aces or kings. So my theory was if he had jack 10 of diamonds or something where he had two overs, where he had 15 outs, somehow convince him that he only had nine outs. And uh, maybe yeah. maybe he gets away with it. He can fold and still have a million in chips. Yeah. So that that part of it, at least, I kind of, I kind of like my, what I did there. Yeah, but I, yeah. I insta-rip. And um, the button quickly folds. Olivier, uh, he takes a deep sigh. I mean, like the World Series, the, the you know the the blog says he 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 tanked called, but he's never folding here. He's getting too good of a price. Uh, he just wanted my stack counted just to make sure, you know what I mean, all that kind of stuff. But he, you know, it all takes about thirty seconds, and he calls, and he has the king jack of diamonds, uh, okay. and uh, ten of diamonds on the river, and I'm knocked out, and. Olivier takes third place for six hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> which not that I if I won this hand I would have. But if I won the hand I would have had you know over two million yeah. over two million chips over the chip average you know seventy big blinds you know it would have been would have been my high water mark. All I started the day with eight hundred something thousand and had been just you know fighting just to get it over a million. Fifteen outs twice. He he might have was he a favorite there? Yeah, on the he's a favorite. Okay. I mean, yeah. even if I see his hand face up and know that he's fifty four percent, if he's fifty, you still got to take that. He's fifty four percent chance to win. If I knew his yeah, hand he's exactly, you still got to do it. Uh, yeah, because I'm I'm getting it's 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 nine hundred thousand to win a uh, with all the other money in there to win like a one point yeah. four million chip pot. Yeah. So, um, but it's interesting. I talked to a bunch of guys, and you got. You had some very uh, different views. People, you know, smart people taking different positions. Um, the one guy right away said it's a, it's an easy fold. This guy Ye- hmm. Yev, who I know, who's like a cash game, you know, whiz, and you know, and he's like, um, he's like, well, he said, well, if you can see his hand, you got to call. He's like, but um, he's like, you can't totally take sets out of their range. He's like, you can't just because the button you thought there is stealing. The button's still going to wake up with a hand there sometimes. The button's still going to have some slow played big pairs and it's going to have some sets. Interesting. So that okay. so that's a factor. And uh, you know he agreed. I mean I agreed to the one hundred percent. He says uh, Olivier is definitely not bluffing here. He always has a hand. He has pretty much he either has ace five of diamonds, or you know the straight draw the over, or he's got um, you know he's got a couple. He's got exactly what he has. Oh, but he says, you know, what, the, the fact that there are sets in both these guys' range, so you can't dismiss the fact that there is a chance I'm putting all my money in uh, drawing at about 10% to win. Yeah. And uh, obviously, if one of them has a flush draw, and if, if they both go in, this is highly likely. If one is a set, one of them is a flush draw, then I am, I am, I have one out. 
you know, the nine of diamonds is no yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. So this guy says, but most of the TPE guy says, um, he's got to draw, rip it in there and just, you know, there's a lot of chips in there and you got to hold. I think most, uh, yeah, a lot of people just, a lot of people have just agreed with what I did and just said, well, you just got unlucky and, you know, you read him as a draw, you knew where he was, you knew he needed a hand. I would have liked, it would have been nice if I had, you know, if we were a little bit deeper maybe where, you know, I had let some fold equity essentially at that point. It, it'd be interesting what, what he would do with, uh, my ten of diamonds. If he would, if yeah. I could have got, gotten a fold there. Well, I mean, I obviously have the blocker to the nine, or if he, if he, I don't know if he's calling even with the small blind, eight, seven of diamonds with 35 big blinds. I think probably, I think he probably is. You think so? Eight, seven of diamonds? You know, you don't think so? Well, he's got, uh, maybe like eight, nine, eight, seven, that's kind of weak. Well, it's not that much different than eight nine. But I yeah, I, I mean, um, yeah, I'm splitting hairs here. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, if if he if he doesn't have that many diamond connections in his um, in his in his uh, range, then we're dealing with two overs. I mean, he's definitely not calling with like a six of diamonds. I don't think the two cards have to work together, both as as flush and straight possibilities. I think I, I would say he would do ace five of diamonds down to ace two of diamonds, and then beyond that, maybe like. Ace nine to ace ten plus. Right. You know, but I think he's leaving out the six sevens. And right. So there's a lot of combinations though. Ten jack, ten queen, ten king. Yeah. King, yeah ace queen, ace queen, ace king. You know. Anyways, um, so it's funny. For a couple of days, I was thinking those were the two choices between fold or shove. And then I then I I happened to run into uh, some guy I know. Um, Pete Rios is actually his name. He's like he's one of the smarter guys I've met in poker. I joke with him. I said he's the he's the Mexican Galfond. No, huh. but um. And he, without hesitation, says, here's the hand. He said, I flat. Hmm. And I got to say, it didn't even occur to me that that was an option. You know, it didn't to me either. And he said, um, you're telling him you know what he has. And you're telling uh, him you have an overpair. And yeah. if that diamond doesn't come on the turn, this is your pot. Hmm. That's an interesting point. And uh, right away, I thought, God damn it, that's brilliant. The one yeah. spot. He's like, what? and you know, all the other people I told about, well, what if the button shoves? And like, Pete says, well, then you got a decision. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. At that point, I probably um, there'd be so many chips in, I would have to then just say, okay, the button is the one with the draw. Um, or they both have draws or whatever. I mean, that, I mean that that's a tough spot because if I if I call the two twenty, then I'm down to like, you know. I still have 690 in my wood, but I still would have, uh, you know, over 20 bigs, 23 bigs, so I guess I could fold. But he, he, he was agreeing with me. The button, he's like, the button you, you have to take almost all, the button never has a big pair. You almost have to take all the draws out of his combinations because we're really putting, the, the Olivier is much more likely to have the draws. And he was saying, listen, if you flat, you're letting him know that you know what he has and you're, ta- you're serious about this pot. And then if there's a brick on the river, if he wants to go ahead and shove where he just has one card coming, it's an easy call. Yeah. If he checks to us, it's probably an easy call. And then we're, we're talking about all the different combinations. He's like, well, what if a king comes? He's like, king I think you can get away from. An ace you can get away from. I'm like, what about a jack? He's like, uh, if, if a jack's on the turn, he's taking all our money. You know, so we're talking about all the different cards. What about a queen? Cards. Yeah, he's like, queen queen's like borderline. Ten? No, we're not folding to a ten. Not just one over. Okay. You know, not just something like. Because I mean, what tens does he? Yeah. yeah I mean, but basically, yeah. if there's no diamond on the turn, we're taking this pot down eighty percent of the time. Yeah. Or I mean, if we really, if we don't know what he's at, you know, we could check behind on the turn if he checks on the turn, and then on the river when he bets, you know, he's probably not going to pot it. He's going to probably bet three twenty five, and we pay him off, and we still have six hundred k. We still have twenty big blinds left. But it, it would be really a very high variance move for I forget what came on the turn I think it was like a seven of clubs or it was a hand, it was it was a brick for him and um, so we don't know what's going to happen the turn but if he shoves in the turn we're going to call because yeah. we're, we're you know but on the on the flop we're saying okay I know what you have I, I don't I don't I don't I don't need to win flips to win this tournament and then if that diamond doesn't come I mean that's kind of hard for him to shove in even though there's a shit ton of chips in there yeah. Um, I mean, if he bets, you know, then he's. Um, so I just thought that was interesting. That was the line I liked most after I after I listened to it, mainly because it would have 
solve the problem with his hand. Where, I mean, I think, I, I told a few other people this, like, they're like, no, no, he rips the turn. I said, when I call on the flop, he knows I know what he has. I'm just, I'm waiting to see that there's no diamond coming off. So I don't think he, I don't think he can rip a non-diamond turn. Unless it's like an ace or a king. But as it turns out, yeah. he would do with a 10 probably also. But, um, I mean, he wouldn't know where I had. When I call, it looks like I got a big pair. Like 10 yeah. might be no good for him. Yeah. Uh, you know, let me ask you this. Did anyone mention uh, betting the flop, or did they all well, no, like a lot of people, check Yeah, a lot of people like, to, so why not just see bet Then then it kind of becomes easier. Then when, you know, also Olivier might just, might just flat. That might kind of control the size of the pot. Or the other way, he raises, and then I, you know, then I either, but it would be the same result. It's kind of a flop. I mean, if, if I see bet and he raises, it's probably the flatting option is out the door. Then it's, uh, but my. Because for me, with, with no, uh, no in, information until you told me your plan, I like your plan. But if it, if it were me, I would have just see bet the flop. I mean, you got 270 in the pot. I probably would have bet 150 to 190 and see what happened after that. If somebody rips, then you get a decision. If not, then uh, you go from there. Right. But, uh, but I, I liked your plan of uh, uh, check this to the button. Who's gonna Who's gonna bet? And you're right, he did. But then when Olivia did something, that was uh, right. That's when that went out the window. Well, but, because uh, it knocked me out, I kind of like my decision as the as the third worst. I, I don't know if I'm being, but I really I really like the flat. Especially it's just because I didn't think about it. I mean, I talked yeah. to like ten people about it. No one even brought that possibility up. Yeah. And like this player was right away. He's like, I'm flatting. You know, you're letting him know that you have a, a you have an overpair and b you know what he has. Yeah. So like this guy can't like really rep anything uh, on the you know if he doesn't get a diamond on the turn he kind of has to check give up, or or he can shove but he knows at this point I'm calling. Yeah. And he's a two to one dog. Yeah. Um. So. That's smart. I like so that. anyways, uh, I thought it was kind of interesting how. It seems like one of those basic hands, overpair, okay, late tournament. Someone gets it in with the overpair. Someone gets it in with the, uh, you know, the two overs and the draw. And, you know, someone's going to get lucky and someone's going to get unlucky. But there were some, uh, there were some options here to play, maybe play the hand a little differently. And, um, you know, I knew what he had. I guess that's good. Yeah. I mean, kind of thing. But, uh. Made a deep run, dude. That's impressive. How many people were there? Like 70 something hundred? Yeah, over seven thousand is all I remember. Yeah. Yeah, and you got forty three. Well, that's fucking impressive, dude. That is that's good. <laughs> that's good. Well, that is a hell of a run. Didn't suck. No, uh -huh. it was good news. But um, how much did you come back ahead? Would you have to pay your backer like twenty or twenty five or? Yeah, well, there was a bunch of tournaments I didn't play in and had to return that with the markup and whatever. So, yeah, I, I gave the backer like 25K and they immediately gave me 5K back for 40% of my main events. So, yeah. Cool. I don't know how much I'm up. And, uh, you got it. You get quite a bankroll though. I mean, really, like this trip has solved a, uh, a lot of, uh, problems. Well, you, it's, you know? it's postponed some problems. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, you have no faith in yourself. No, but no, this is, this is the same amount of money I had six months ago. All, exactly, all it's, got, all it's done is gotten it's gotten me back to where I was, where I'm not like desperate for a minimum wage job, and I'm exactly I'm giving. Uh, and what have you learned in the last six months? Nothing, Steve. <laughs> there was that dramatic pause. I'm like, tell me. I've what learned. No, me. no. I mean. <laughs> I mean, I've learned that I'm not good at cash. I mean, obviously, I'm done with that. Okay, that's good, that's good. Or, like, cash. if I don't, uh, I'm not going to play cash unless I've invested some time into thinking about it. And I might just have some character flaws, which just make me as a, um, yeah, I don't know. You know, Carlos uh, gave some a lot of good, solid recommendations for cash. And it's kind of funny how you and Carlos, the two, the two Knit Brothers... Uh -huh. been, you're always both giving me the same advice, but like, like I, I had a backer, backer, and Carlos is that. Yeah, that's smart. That's how you got to do it. Anytime you play a one k or higher, get someone to help buy you in, and you're reducing variance. I'm like Carlos. The reason I had a backer is because I was fucking broke. <laughs> if I had fifteen thousand, I would have come out here and bought all these tournaments on my own, and I'd be, you know, be twenty two thousand dollars richer. Um, but yeah, I'm going to. Uh, We'll see. I don't know. You know, I'm still kind of. I got this negative thing about poker here, which is like, you know, you're you're just so damn optimistic about it and uh, love the game. 
And I do too, but uh, you know, it's just uh, you know, well, you've got a. I don't know. We could go back to like Dusty Smith talking in the loop and stuff, but I, like I, I came back today and tried to read a book and I just couldn't do it. You know, my mind just can't concentrate on something like that. You it, read a book on what poker? No, just a, a, a novel. Oh, like, okay. You, there's whole parts of my brain which are just aren't functioning anymore. They're all numbers and math. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't want to. Like <laughs> I don't know, and it's just like just to survive here. I mean, I'm going to really have to go back to the grind, and it's not like simply where I turn a computer on and I start printing money. I mean, I'm going to yeah. have to constantly be working on my game. Um, go deeper into the, you know, or you know, maybe take another shot at live cash. Carlos recommended a uh, training site, which I might take a look at. And oh uh, yeah, what, uh, crush live poker with uh, Bert Hansen. Yeah, that's the one. I could take another yeah. shot at that. It still seems like, um, but like I said, I met some people. You know, poker's doable. Mm-hmm. I think maybe. You know what I mean? We'll oh yeah. Uh, you know, if I have the, if I'm hyper vigilant of my over, you know, my my emotional mental uh, health. But you know, this vacation could have got this vacation, as you say, whatever you want to call this, this work um, trip to Vegas could have gone very differently. You know, like I said, the very first tournament I got it in, jacks against queens at the river. If uh, if I lose that tournament, maybe the next day when I got knocked out of a 1K, rather than running over to the Planet Hollywood and getting another score, I would have said, God, I'm fucked and gone and gotten drunk. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so things got, you know, I got on the right. I mean, on the other hand, you know, the, uh, you know, obviously things could have gone really good. I could have, uh, you know, my nines could have held there and you never know. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'll definitely be back to Vegas and then we'll, uh, I don't think this 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 well this does drastic. I mean, I was just so depressed slash you know all sorts of problems for my financial stuff that I was really. I told you every time I I stepped into my into Bed Bath and Beyond, I felt like I was you know walking to the gallows. So I will not have that experience at least for a few months. Good. Did you quit your job or what'd you do? Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I tried to keep it, but I had I gave oh. him very short notice. I said someone just gave me money to play poker. I have to go. This is a minute, you know. I gave him like a 10 days notice. They said, well, if you gave us two weeks notice, we could have, but the schedule's already been made. You have to fulfill your obligation to the schedule. And it's funny, they have so high a turnover there. You know, everybody's changing every three days because you're only paying 10 bucks an hour. I thought, like I said, well, maybe I should come back in a month and you haven't gotten anyone better. <laughs> what they say to No, that? but they're, no, they, they wanted to get, they wanted me gone there. So, or, I mean, they couldn't keep my job, I guess. So, um, it's not the end of the world, although I still, uh, yeah, I mean, it's still probably some sort of job here. I don't, you know, I don't know. But um, yeah, there's there's limited options for me. Like poker is not just you know the joy of playing a game for a living, but at this point, it's like my most practical way to make money. And uh, like I say, this won't be the uh, neither of the even though these two nice scores, forty six thousand, twenty nine thousand, I feel confident sometime within the next couple of years, there's going to be one a lot bigger than that. If I can somehow just, uh, you know, survive till then and be smart with my money. Well, you could you could put uh, 5K on Bovada and 5K on winning and just play the 100s and 200s. Well, I don't know. I mean, th- there's know? still, you know, it's funny. I was talking to, uh, talking to James Gettinger, if that's how you pronounce his last name, and I was saying, you know, it's hard to get away from merge. You know, I said there's there's almost no variance. Like, my worst stretch was like, over three months, I'd lose a couple thousand dollars. He says, "Well, that's not normal. That's not variance." He's like, "He's like, you got to use the bigger swings than that." So, I mean, if I put ten thousand on Bovada in America's Card Room and lose it, that's, you know, that's a big shot to my, to my bankroll. And I mean, well, what do you what do you have in your bankroll right now? Fifty? Well, I don't know. I mean, if I'm if I'm living at all like a rational human being, and I want to have money to the side to live for the next six months, then my bankroll really is not that big. But um, of course, the great thing is here, I made my backers some money. So hopefully yeah. that would. And I, I thought, and even some of these real good pros, I found they they even uh, they don't even have all of themselves online. I thought that was interesting. Hmm, so, really? Yeah. You know, Alex uh, Fitzgerald, have you heard his uh, podcast, The One Outer? Yep. He was talking about that today, and he said that uh, a lot of, uh, well, today, uh, I don't know, what, whatever podcast I was listening to today on the way to uh, the Venetian, and he said uh, that a lot of uh, online uh, pros, like you said, are backed, and he said they have 50% of their action. He said if they're normally making like 20 bucks an hour playing online, which he said apparently was uh, 
or 20 bucks a tournament, which he said was really good, um, then now all of a sudden they're only making 10. And what he said was he's like, you know, if they could just get their bankroll handled, then they could be make they could double their income just by supporting themselves instead of being bad. Right. But and another thing he mentioned too is he said like I charge uh and I'm speaking as him, he says I charge two hundred and ten dollars an hour for coaching. He said that's over ten tournaments. He's like, You can you can do an hour of coaching a day and double your income. You know, so right. that's another option too. I mean you could do like they were talking about do a Twitch stream, which could turn into coaching. Um, awesome. and, uh, if you're not backed online, you're, like he said, you're going to double your income because now you're not, uh, you're not giving away half of it. Uh, yeah, I have no desire to sell my, sell any of my action online. I'd rather just, okay, I'd good. rather just cross my fingers and hope. But, you know, they were talking about how, like, well, on Poker Stars, you know, it's easy to have, a, for a, a very good player to have a $20,000 downswing. Yeah. So if, like, yeah, so basically the, these guys are, you know, I, I guess it's just, con- I, I knew in live poker it was very common. I just didn't know. In online, too, there's guys who are just, you know, it's trying to reduce variance. But, um, yeah. yeah, like right now I'm not even addressing the big questions. I know uh, I know I get to play the main event for the first time. That's awesome. Which is, that's awesome. Which, uh, Congratulations, dude. That's fucking cool. Which, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Although, you know, I'm not even like... Uh, Going for the excitement. I'm going to make a run at the thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> of course. And I even, uh, I even got, I, in the price of, uh, you know, I'm even a bigger commodity now. Because I only charge 17% markup for these tournaments I played. And now I'm charging 30% for the main event. Mm-hmm. Everyone gets more for the main event. But it's funny, the one player I was talking to has played with me. He's like, dude, 17%? That's way low. I could have I would have bought the blah, blah, blah. But it's just kind of cool to have someone believe in me. And it's nice that the, uh, like I said, the backer made money. And. Uh, hopefully that that's the start of a relationship which will uh we will both benefit from in the future hopefully because if yeah. i want if my if my goal was to go out there and play the whole summer next year i mean i'm not going to i'm likely not going to have $50,000 to do it <laughs> you know i'm going to have to yeah 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 if you come out and uh, play the whole uh, summer you 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 should do what uh, mark and those guys did get a get a room with them you know yeah they they're kind of a lot though i mean 11 grand for uh for the whole thing, um, right? Although, yeah, if you think about it, break it down. You know, three guys stay in there for that's. Uh, oh, four guys. Four guys, yeah, twenty. Yeah, I mean, it's eighty or ninety bucks a night. So that's that's what you'd be spending for a hotel room. Plus, they get a they get a pool and a, you know, a pool and a hot tub and a laundromat and their own kitchen. So they're not spending money on every day. And like, they are very very close. I guess. Yeah, I didn't think of that. And I, yeah. I, I was spending, you know. Buying nineteen dollar cheeseburgers and seventeen dollar omelets every day too. So if you're you're if yeah. you're just cooking for yourself right there, but yeah, just that's how I'd like to do it. Uh, I mean, I definitely had a great time out there. And next summer, I'd love to be able to go out there for maybe the the whole summer, except for you know go go for one week back to see uh, my son, and maybe hopefully another week where I could get the uh, my son's mother to come out. And um, who knows? And uh, Anyways, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty, uh, obviously I'm pretty jazzed. I mean, after I won the first tournament, I said, well, I really can't, you won't hear me bitching about poker for a while. And, uh, ju- yeah. it just got better thereafter. Yeah, 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 that's awesome. Although, uh, that's awesome. I was so happy for you, Ben. My, my mom, my dad, my brother, like everyone that listens, they were freaking stoked. Oh, man, that's, they were, uh, I even got, uh, buddies from work that, uh, that are listening, so it's <laughs> pretty cool. You guys are much more generous than me, because I told you, I was rooting for you to get second place in one of these tournaments. <laughs> You know what I, I want to be the I want to be the only one who has a poker trophy sitting on. When uh, when I was when I when we were getting down to the money and I was in that Venetian, I was like, how cool would that be if we both banked the same tournament at the Venetian? <laughs> yeah, that was, that was, uh, wasn't meant to be. Wasn't meant to be. Uh, well, who knows? I uh, I still got two days left. Uh, I haven't checked to see if uh, that same tournament's playing. So maybe I've spoken too soon. We'll see. Right, there still could be some binkage, binkage around the corner here. There could. There could. Have you played any cash or? No cash, no. That's right. Don't care. Don't. Oh, you know what? DVB is the tournament Look guy. At this. Look at this. Uh, What's that? Series event. One day. Oh no, it's not the same tournament. It's a six hundred dollar buy-in tomorrow at the Venetian, but uh, probably three day uh, tournament. No, no, it's just a one day. Starts at noon. Um, fifteen thousand starts at fifty one hundred. What's the guarantee? Uh, Twenty five thousand. Forty k. So structure is 
30, uh, 30 minute levels, not 40. So, man, the 30s, you know, it's funny. When I, when I first started playing tournaments, uh, live, well, maybe I shouldn't say that, but I, just a couple of years ago, like 30 minute levels to me sounded like, wow, you have all the time in the world. And, and, and now, like, if it's not 40 or more, I feel like it's just a rat race, you know? Right. But, uh, I can tell now that I'm moving up in limits, like, there's more, uh, pros, there's, um, uh, yeah, there's tougher spots, but there's still the soft spots too. I mean, like, every time I've sat down, it's, it's never been like, oh, there's, it's impossible to make money here. Like, there's, there's always those soft spots, you know, there's always like a rich businessman that just like, is sick of losing at blackjack, so he's going to try his hand at cards. Or, they're often, you know, you know they're what I mean? often gone early. You know, it's finally they are, a lot yeah. of people. Once, just, once you get to the later levels, then yeah, you're right. There are there are more pros. But uh, I, I think I, I I find myself repeating a, a cliche. And this is funny. I'll, this was talking to Pete Rios again the other the other day, and it was we were talking about we were in the uh, the monster stack, and I think this was on the first. Uh, and I, I I'm not sure which which tournament this was, and uh, I see I won't even bitch about. Having a going out in a massive pot in the monster stack when I flopped a set because you know I, I ran so good I'm not allowed to complain about bad beats. But anyways, I'm like my ta- my table's terrible. He's like you know that's interesting. I've never been in a terrible table. There's always like you know one guy who's really good at poker and then a few guys who are really competent and a couple guys who are who are not terrible but kind of you know he's like only one out of ten or fifteen players do you see who at a poker table is ever really terrible. And I'm like you know what that's very well said. Because when you talk about a soft spot, it's a guy you don't have a, I don't think, you know, not necessarily have a huge edge on. Or at least in a lot of, you know, these 1Ks and up, I think. So I, he made a good point. When it, You know, I, I can't remember the last time when I think about it, when I was on a terrible table. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, ju- if, yeah. if I just think about the, all the WSOP events I played. I mean, in some of the ones, like the monster stack, I'm like, okay. I'm making it through the day unless I'm just totally fucked over with the cards kind of thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But by the end of that day, uh, I actually got it in bad a couple times and had to, had to you know, had one hands. And But by the end of the day, there were some really good players there. Yeah. So, I mean, just yeah. overall, I mean, just, you know, I ran good, I guess is what I'm saying. Well, we, 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 we I, I know guess that. to me, like, soft spots, okay, I, at the uh, Planet Hollywood yesterday, um, uh, I was, uh, this this to me is a really soft spot. And, and maybe I'm just getting, maybe my outlook on poker is different now or whatever. Anyways, $300 tournament. Um, guy, uh, early position raises. He's a pro. Uh, I come around. I've got, uh, queens, uh, two red queens. I, uh, three bet. Um, guy in the small blind. Um, he calls my raise and then the pro calls. So he's out of position for the rest of the hand. Doesn't know if the pro is going to re-raise and, and he calls. Pro calls, flop comes out, all diamonds, uh, it's queen, jack, mm, queen, jack, blank, um, uh, three of diamonds. Okay. Uh, so I flop top set, um, small blind checks, pro checks, uh, I bet uh, about a third to less than half a pot, half the pot. Okay. Um, small blind shoves for... Just a little bit more is like 3K more. I bet like 21, he shoved for five or something. Pro folds, I call. He had 10 8 of diamonds. That to me is a soft spot. You're in the small blind, out of position for the rest of the hand. You're calling a three bet, not knowing if another guy is going to raise. Right. That's a soft spot. I, I mean, I agree with that. How, how, um, it's not a and, terrible and he was, player. He, he, but he was short stack too. He was under 20 bigs, right? Exactly, yeah. So that's like, what, what are you makes doing? It. Right. There's there's always those guys at the table until you get into like day two or later in the tournament. You know, there's there's those guys that you can accumulate and double up from. You know, I guess my point just in terms of the overall is, I mean, no, I mean, listen, unless it's like a hundred K high roller with like 50 people. Yeah, (laughs) I'm going to have an edge in any tournament poker tournament. I enter pretty much forever. You know what I mean? But it's not like. It's not like, but you're never going to get at a table where you just, oh, I'll just open every pot and three bet and just everybody's going to be folding and I'll just, you know, triple my stack and, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I mean, it's, you know, the edges are small and, you know, I mean, if, if I'm going to be a, a poker pro, it's going to be, it's going to be hard work and, um, yeah, I, I guess that, I think, I, I think I had a point there, you know, anyways, but just, you know, when I say, when you, when you hear people just say, oh, the table is terrible. And I thought this player, well, I've never been in a terrible table. I think I've made the same point before, but here I'm, I just found myself spouting some cliche about I'm surrounded by terrible players. You say, I like my table. 
I don't have a, I don't have, I, I like that you know, that, that's, a, that's a better way of saying it, but. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I some like of these, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, by day one of the monster stack, my table is, there's one guy, I forget, you know, never knew, knew the guy, some guy from Indiana, and um, he just kept getting unlucky. Against me, I, I got, we got it in ace-king against my ace-queen, a short stack, and he lost. Mm -hmm. And he was just doing, taking some weird creative lines and then showing some crap hands, and we never knew what he had, and he was like, but he just kept getting unlucky and left. And, like, I turn immediately to the guy on my right. He's like, that might be the best player I've ever seen. <laughs> and I was going to, and I was, I was just ready to say something. I was, I was going to say, that guy's a great poker player. And it's funny, we got no, I mean, like, the guy was like, you know, he owned some business in Indiana. He wasn't even a poker pro, I don't think. So yeah, it is yeah. funny how, I mean, just how tough poker is, though. How many, you know. And, uh, I mean, maybe I'd be the sign, sign of that, too, you know. I mean, against, against these top players, they don't, they're not going to run me over either, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so, are you it's done? Are game. you done with Vegas after this? I mean, is there any chance I see you next week or for the uh, for the for the main event? Or are you kind of you, you know? Yeah, I I just feel like I've just gotten a taste of this. You know, um, let's see what where, where are we at? Um, First of all, when can you? We haven't even gotten to the specifics of your move to Vegas plan. I mean, when when do you get full uh, retirement from the from the uh, fire department? How many years away from that are you? That's a tricky one because I uh, I can't collect my pension until I'm fifty. Okay. So if I leave when I'm forty, then um, I got ten years of no income from the from the department from my pension. So, my plan is, is to, um, I have some rental properties, and I'd like to, if I can get those paid off before I leave the fire department, then at least I'll have some rental income coming in where I can just pay the bills. How do you have so much goddamn money? I don't even want to know how much you make at the fire department. It'll make me angry. Well, the, the money's all tied up in shit. I know, you know but you, I mean? you, it, you own a goddamn plane and rental properties. It, uh, well, I, I make my own beef jerky, bro. <laughs> There's a lot of money to be saved in little things that add up a lot. Jesus Christ, this drives me <laughs> fucking bananas. Here. I mean, uh, just the beef jerky alone. Like, if I, if I had bought Jack Links, that would have been at least, God, I don't know, probably a hundred bucks. I mean, it's, it's, it's a metric shit ton of beef jerky. Right? That, yeah. it would have been a hundred bucks of, of, uh, beef jerky because, you know, they sell it for ten dollars for four ounces or whatever, and I've got two pounds. And, uh, I was able to buy that at the, uh, Mexican, uh, um, for uh, uh, 20 bucks so things like that add up a lot um, while I'm out here I'm staying at my brother's house which is basically rent free I buy food and beer and, and uh, you know um, right. there's all these uh, my car okay I bought my car when I was uh, 20 years old and I still have it and I'm 35 I do all the maintenance on it myself um, you know there's all these little things that add up and it's when you save a dollar, it's exactly the same as making one. So all this money that I'm saving, I'm putting into property, which in the long run, as long as I don't get hit by a car tomorrow when I'm out for my run, will pay off in the long run. Uh, I need a smart woman to take over. <laughs> it's, my, it's, my only, it's my only hope of some little class stability here, but whatever. I am what I am. Uh, it certainly makes for an interesting show. We are polar opposites, that's for damn sure. <laughs> yeah, that's hard to disagree with that. <laughs> oh, damn. Uh, let's see, where were we? Okay, so we are in the month of June. Um, hmm. Possibly, I don't know, this might be kind of tough. End of June, early, now that'd be such a fast trip. By then, that's when the uh, main event is. I'm, I'm not going to play in that. No, I, I got the whole main event off, I think. When's the main event? Like the 9th through the 14th? or uh, no, July 6th, uh, the 3rd through the the third, the 4th, the 5th, and the 6th, I think, are the three day ones. And I'm going to be playing the 6th. That's all I know. Okay. And then, um, yeah, I don't know how long it goes after that, but uh, we'll see. Yeah. i got to decide, ho hopefully, if... Uh, I really want fifty percent of myself in that main event, but I, I might sell. I might sell off a, few, a, a little bit more. I don't know. Hey, good. Yeah. I mean, really, what you're going for is you're going for, you know, the big money. And I mean, 
if you make the final table, even if you only have ten percent of yourself, you're doing pretty freaking good. That's a six figure score. Right. Well, we'll see. You know. Yeah. Take it a hand at a time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I said, I, I'm my 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 poker mind is right now focused on you know World Series main event kind of shit, and then uh, come August or late July or whatever, I'll get back to like, okay, h- how much an hour can I make online? Let's see if we can get up get that hourly up to fifty bucks an hour playing tournaments. Yeah, yeah, which is probably what I've made you know over the last year or so, but you know, just the money hasn't been get, I can't get the money, so yeah. Yeah, well, look at it just like a steady paycheck, you know. Like I was talking with a guy uh, at the Rio uh, the other day about that, and he said the same thing. He said he's got 10k on there that he just he's getting a he's getting a 2,500 dollar check. He said uh, one of them took like nine weeks to get there, and then he said he got one after that, like six weeks later. And he said his buddy had 4,800 on there, which you know you got more than that. And uh, he said the same thing. He's like. We're not playing on there anymore right. until we get, you know, until we're down to like 5K and then we can start start playing again. He's all everything's on right. ACR and uh, sure. Robata. Well, I, I last night I got on a carbon and put five thousand dollars in sports bets on there. Wow! Um, under the hope that uh, basically not really caring if I win or lose. I mean, if you do enough bets, they're all between three and six hundred. They probably cross themselves out, but. Um, you know, carbon poker, you know, gets to rake the vig, which is probably 500 bucks. So basically, if I do that enough, like, hopefully my account only goes down a couple thousand, but, um, but like, I'll be a sports better rather than a poker, uh, poker player, and I think they take care of those guys better, so I'll get my money off quicker. But we'll see. That's un- unsubstantiated. I don't know if that works that way or not. We'll see. <laughs> it's kind of a big gamble, don't you think? Well, I wouldn't gamble the whole thing away. Five thousand dollars is when I got fifty thousand on there. It's not. It's kind of meaningless. It's not. Well, I mean, not meaningless, but when they haven't paid people in thirteen or fourteen weeks, and it looks like nobody's getting one single dollar off there. Like re- yeah, right, have you, right have now, you got your, you your second check or, or nothing. I'm sorry. Hey, you got your one check for twenty five hundred. How long ago was that? Uh, I, I don't know. Over two months ago. Holy shit! Yeah, and you haven't gotten. One I since think then. I don't. Well, you know, whatever. It's it's all conjecture at this point. But I, I, like at this point, if you told me, okay, no big deal. I got to wait every eight or nine weeks. You know, that, and I'll get. You know, I'll basically get. Uh, it'll take four or five years to come. I, I, I'm like, okay, that would be no problem. I wouldn't sports bet. But I don't know if that's the situation. I don't think a company can keep going when they're telling people three or four weeks, and it's taking twelve. Yeah, that's a good point. So I don't know. Yeah. But the funny thing is I, I, I won my first couple bets. <laughs> so. Oh, jeez. What's your count up to now? It really matters. I picked the Golden State Warriors to win game six. Uh-huh. And um, I forget the other one. I picked the Red Sox one game. And, uh, and what, what, do you get, what do you got now? You, I forget. Well, I took a couple of ridiculous long shot golf picks. Like Tiger's like <laughs> Tiger's like 50 to one to win the U.S. Open or something. So I bet like 400 bucks on it. So I, I win twenty thousand if he wins the U.S. Open or something. <laughs> and uh, I think I took a couple UFC fights. A couple of them are weird. Like Ronda Rousey is such a huge underdog, uh, such a huge favorite. If you bet like eight hundred bucks, you win like seventy five dollars. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So that's pretty funny. Yeah. Um. Anyways, man, I think we've. Uh, yeah, we've been spitting for a while now. This might be one of our longest episodes. Yeah, we you can edit out, edit out a little bit, like the parts where you talk. <laughs> I think uh, maybe we should just on. do. I, I think we had a lot to get off our chest, you know. I, I we, think just we, we, how about just, just a, a, a just a two hour episode of us chewing gum? People would probably jo- enjoy more, but no. <laughs> so we had a lot to get off our chest with the, the WSOP, and a lot of shits happened. You've had a great uh, run. I I had all these hands that I had stored in my head that I had to. Uh, Get out, especially after that bust out hand. Oh man, that just it left a foul taste in my mouth with the uh, ace queen and the seven seven. I'm like, am I retarded? Like, should, did I take the wrong line or what? Nah, no. that one isn't. Um, yeah. uh, I mean, I'm trying to think of the hand you played. None of them but really he took the same exact line that he took with the pocket fives. You know, and I'm like, I don't know, I don't know. I yeah, I but, just, uh, like I said, if anything, I, I like maybe three better fold pre, but I, I guess folding, you know. 
that just seems one of those spots where just, you know, just the memory of different hands, it's like, that's a spot where you, you flop, you flop something and, you know, the person ends up getting three streets of value with Ace King, you yeah. know, just yeah. sizing their bets perfectly so you're kind of priced in every time or, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, man, well, hopefully next time I talk to you, I'm going to be have some, uh, well, you know, I still haven't decided if I'm going to Vegas next week. i got to figure that out. But uh, I think you should, man. I think you should. You're on a freaking heater right now. you got to run it. And uh, Right. Well, i got to, yeah. dr- you know, the drive back took like seven hours. Like, the drive there took four. So, like. Well, when did you leave? That, that probably has a lot to do with it. I, I left, like, Sunday morning at, like, um. Was it Sunday or Monday morning? No, I don't even remember. No, I left like Monday morning at like 10 a.m. I mean, there should be no. Oh, that's a problem. Yeah. Mo- Monday. Uh, okay. Monday at 2 p.m. Driving through the mountains. I'm in a traffic jam. Is that is that it's supposed to be that way? Well, if you're going to leave Vegas, um, now keep in mind. So I've got property out here. I've made this drive. I actually figured it out, and I've probably made the drive from California to here at least a hundred times. And uh, you got to leave around 8 a.m. You can't put your foot around. Six o'clock is a perfect time. Like, you got to get up early and go. And if you do that, you're good. By the time – well, you know what? You're going to San Diego, so this could be totally off. But uh, I'm literally, LA traffic – I'm literally driving through the mountains where I cannot see one house, where it's a crawl with no construction problems, with no accident. I have no clue. Oh, there was no accident, really? So I have no idea what the deal was. But, you know, you know I, what? I'm, new, I'm new to this there, area, so – There was probably an accident, and uh, – um, it cleared before you got there, and there's that time delay of 45 minutes or whatever where the traffic is just a parking lot. But, uh, yeah, if you leave early in the morning, if you leave like 8 o'clock, by the time you hit L.A., um, you know, the early morning L.A. traffic is cleared, and then you breeze through that. But if you hit it if you hit it late, then you hit the L.A. traffic. L.A. traffic, actually, the there is no L.A. Traffic. traffic, first of all. I, I skip L.A. I go. Yeah, I keep forgetting. You're going to say yeah, that. I go. So that's. You know what, dude? I have absolutely no experience in that. I have no idea. <laughs> Long story short. I knew I eventually you. I knew eventually you'd shut up on the matter if we just if I if I just <laughs> sat here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. With, with San Diego, I'm not sure. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. L.A. and uh, going to Ventura, I can tell you quite a bit, but uh, down to San Diego. For some reason, I had it in my head that you were taking the same route I was, but you're not. So I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So, anyway, so I'm and like, if I go out there, I'm saying maybe I have to fly. You know, this is interesting. Yeah, but then you won't have a car. You need a car when you're here, so you can go to the Rio and stuff. I mean, what are you going to do without a car? You got to take a taxi every time, which is going to be twenty, thirty bucks just to go there. Well, um, if I'm staying at the Rio, no, it isn't. Like, if I fly, just well, whatever. I'll figure it out. I might just be showing up at your brother's doorstep. I've been giving and giving and giving and giving to the Barton family for years, and now it's time to take something back. Yes, well, actually, yes, no, I haven't. But uh. <laughs> Honestly, you could probably stay at my brother's. I mean, I, I'm... Okay. Well, maybe we'll talk about that. Although the, the, Rio, the, Rio takes, the Rio takes pretty good care of me, i got to say. Because, uh, okay. So, I, I mean, like, I, my bill for staying 21 nights was, um, I think, $700. So, no, that's not bad. That, well, that's really that's be ridiculous cheap, ridiculously cheap, under forty bucks a day, and that included thirteen bucks a day for internet. So pretty much, so oh, if, wow. if you took that out, yeah, I was getting um, pretty pretty cheap. And but anyways, man, uh, it's time to to head out here. Yeah, we gotta. Do, I, I gotta eat. Um, uh, uh, all right. Okay, man. Okay. Well, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Yeah. Uh, hit us up on uh, Twitter at h u p podcast. Uh, Facebook, Heads Up Poker Podcast. Email us with your questions or hands if you want us to review them at uh, Heads Up Poker Podcast at gmail.com and check out our blog where you can get all our episodes. Heads Up Poker Podcast.blogspot.com. You guys have a great week. Mike, I will talk to you soon. I got two more days. Okay, good luck. Wish me luck. Good luck. <laughs> and here is your weekly motivational speech. We have, as humans, we have something that no animal has. And what it's called is imagination. And what imagination allows you to do, it allows you to see it before it actually happens. What I mean by that is I need you to go 10 years into the future, 20 years into the future, and I need you to see yourself actually becoming the person you want to be. You got to live in the forward. 
Block the whole world out. Put some music on, some classical music, right? The piano if you need to. I don't know what you need to listen to, but I want you to take 30 minutes. Go in the closet. Go in the basement. Go go to the library. Go, go into a room alone. And I want you to take 30 minutes, and I want you to imagine. I want you to take 30 minutes, and I want you to live in a forest. See, the problem is I'm talking to some of you guys. The problem that you're having is you're living in the future, and you're living in the present. And you keep talking about the mistakes. You keep talking about the past. You keep talking about your trials. You keep talking about your situation. And I want you to know that everybody that's ever been great, everybody has had an obstacle to overcome. They've had a barrier that they had to climb. There is no individual who's ever reached success and he didn't have to go through an obstacle or a barrier to get there. I need you to live in the future. I need you to go in your future every single day. I need you to go in your future. I need you to see what you're going to be. Listen to me. What you are to be, you are now becoming. And so you got to use your imagination. And your imagination has to take you beyond the pain. You your imagination has to take you beyond the trouble. Your imagination has to take you to the next level. We had to see ourselves there long before it happened. The second tool is we got to embrace faith. I have to have faith to believe that the thing that I see 10 years from now, 20 years from now, that one day that thing is going to be successful. When I was homeless at 16, I could have quit. When I was homeless, I could have given up. There are many a days that I thought about committing suicide, but I said to myself, E, just keep imagining, keep thinking, keep seeing, keep seeing what you're not now but what you're going to be. Sometimes it's going to be hard. Sometimes you're going to look all around you and nowhere do you see success. Nowhere do you see anything that remotely looks like success, but you got to embrace Number two, you got to embrace the faith. you got to believe that although it's not happening right now, if you keep pressing, if you keep pushing, guess what? One day is going to be your day. That's right. I need you to say that with me. One day is going to be your day. Embrace the faith. you got to be able to see it and believe it that when there's no, no evidence around you, when there's no evidence around you, when you got pain in your life, when, you, when, you, when you're tired, you feel like giving up, and you feel like quit. When you look around you, you don't see anything that looks anything like success. You got to embrace the faith and believe that one day going to be my day. But one day can't be your day if you give up. If you quit, if you quit, no day will ever be your day. 